All right, thanks a lot, Matt Shirell, for that interview. And Bill Long, as we get set for this national championship game, I know you as a former player can relate to just uh, what kind of nerves uh, the players must be facing right now. Uh, Got to be an exciting time for both teams. Oh, absolutely. You walk into this park, and it's a, it's a great park to play in at the best of times, but you walk in now, and there's stands everywhere. They're going to be full. There's going to be 5,000 people here. Uh, in 1997, uh, we were all walking about a foot off the ground when we played in this game. Well, we certainly expect that kind of contest here again this afternoon. For the Okanagan Sun, it's going to be stopping the uh, big, uh, both defensive and offensive line of the Saskatoon Hilltops. I happen to be down field side just as the Hilltops came on the field, and uh, their reputation is well-deserved. These are some big boys off the prairies. They always are. They always are. They have been for years, and the Sun really do have to have a much better game on their front seven. Uh, today in order to stop Saskatoon. Yeah, well, certainly they're a scoring machine as well, and uh, we all know that. As we look at some of the keys to winning this contest today for the Saskatoon Hilltops, for them with that big old line, they got to be able to give quarterback Steve Beelan some time to throw the ball. Definitely. They have to control the line of scrimmage. That's simple, basic football. That's what the Prairie teams do best. They play simple, basic, fundamentally sound football, and it all starts on the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I call it smash mouth if you like. Now, uh, the other thing the Hilltops are looking for is to make some big plays. Uh, these are the types of things that can really turn out football game around and for the Hilltops they suggest maybe well five big plays could be the key for them well, and those five big plays are not necessarily on offense their special teams their defense their interceptions their big punt returns maybe a block kick here or there but five big plays on either side of the ball I think it's something every coach looks for in a football game and that is the perfect game or a mistake free game and something like turnovers could really uh, turn around this game in a hurry so the Hilltops looking to play mistake free yes mistakes uh, once again the obvious mistakes are turnovers but other mistakes that coaches hate missed assignments missed blocks running the wrong patterns not picking up the right coverage. That's uh, Those are the kind of mistakes they want to eliminate. Well, when the uh, provincial championship game played here two weeks ago where the Sun defeated the Rebels, there was at least 1,500 people on hand. They expect the crowd maybe four times that big, and uh, likely most of them will be cheering for the home team for the Hilltops. If they can score early, they can get the crowd out of it. I think they can get the crowd out if they score early, uh, but they'll get the crowd out for a little while. Uh, these people that are here today aren't going to let, uh, if Saskatoon can get a lead, they're not going to let that slow them down. Interesting that a team has put up 140 points in the playoffs so far would actually think running the ball is key but for the Hilltops they want to control the ground game to open up the air attack. Absolutely and they also want to run the ball to, to keep it away from the Okanagan Sun offense because they know the Okanagan Sun have a very high power can score quickly and Saskatoon's going to go with the philosophy if we have the ball you can't score. Well for the Okanagan Sun their keys to victory here today will certainly be to score early. It's been the one weakness in their team this season. Well, this has been a real problem for them, particularly over the last three or four weeks, and, and this is a contrary uh, key to winning for Saskatoon. Saskatoon wants to get the Sun crowd out early. Sask uh, the Sun want to get the crowd in the game early. They want to score. They want to come, whether it's a field goal, whatever it is, they need to score early. I had a chance to talk with the president of the Saskatoon Hilltops, and he was telling me that uh, one concern he had for his team was that the feeling out process might mean a slow top or a slow start, that is, for his Hilltops, uh, due to the fact that two teams have never seen each other, nerves regarding the big game, so that may actually well work out in uh, Okanagan's favor. I, I think it could. I think it could. Uh, both teams are going to spend the first quarter just looking to see what's happening out there. And if, if you can score in the first quarter and get a lead, that's a bonus. Well, for the Okanagan Sun, we know they're not as big on the line, so they're obviously going to have to use the speed of guys like uh, Ryan Folk and Ryan Scheman and uh, Chris Truscott to get some pressure on quarterback Steve Beelan. Their defensive speed goes all the way from the defensive line to the secondary. And they have to take advantage of that, which means that if they get into a, a situation where they're having to take on the Saskatoon offensive lineman head on, one on one, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. They're not very big, so they have to shoot those gaps and and uh, make the tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Well, this is a team that needs the passing game to work as well with uh, their all-star quarterback Zach Silverman. They'll certainly be looking to move the ball that way. As we look at the final league standings this season, Bill, you see the Okanagan Sun finish the year nine and one, almost a perfect season. Their only loss coming to South Fraser, who wound up third overall. The Victoria Rebels, who wound up playing here in the final, were second, uh, rounding out the seasons in the BC or the schedule that is, and standings in the BCFC. The Valley Huskers six and four, good enough for fourth place. Tri-City at 4-6 and six, and the Abbotsford Air Force 2-7-1. and one. Finally, Vancouver rounding out the year winless 0-9-1. Oh, and one. It was a big win here two weeks ago when they defeated the Victoria Rebels in the BCFC final at 43-38 overtime victory. One of the most thrilling games we've seen here ever. Looking at the Saskatoon Hilltops, their route to the final. It's been a perfect season for the squad who are 8-0 and oh in the regular season, followed by the Edmonton Wildcats who finished up 5-2-1. and one. The Huskies were 3-4-1. and one. Calgary 2-6-0 and, oh, and uh, Regina, the Prairie Thunder, finishing out their uh, season at one and seven for the Saskatoon Hilltops they've been awesome in the playoffs giving up one point in three games including their 52 nothing over OFC champ St. Leonard to advance to this national championship game well Bill we are expecting a dandy here today at the Apple Bowl and uh, we are now just moments away from kickoff stay tuned folks we'll be back with more from the Apple Bowl and the opening kickoff to the Canadian Bowl 2000 here on Shaw Cable run 
than he can throw, and Zach is uh, much more of a finesse guy, but BLN likes to zip it right in there. Well, Matt Shirell, I know you're down there in the sidelines, not far from the uh, Saskatoon Hilltops. They're a team we've talked about how big they are. You really get the impression that uh, they're, you know, they're looking at them initially. They are certainly the biggest team the Sun will have faced this season. Oh, by far, Grant. I'm, I'm about uh, 30, 40 feet away from them right now. I don't know, maybe it's the color of their uniforms, these blue blue um, tops and yellow pants it makes them look big no but there are some big players I actually talked to Jay Christens the offense coordinator of the Sun before the game and I mentioned that very fact I said those guys are huge and he goes nah they're not that much bigger in Victoria well the offensive line sure is and last night at the uh, CFL or the CJFL annual awards the banquet uh, three members of that offensive line made all Canadian so they were all stars and that's that's going to be a key to this game the offensive line if they can uh, give their big quarterback who's also 230 pounds himself they give him some time um, he'll be able to pick the sun apart that's at least their game plan but they they are huge the offensive line no doubt about that well, for the Okanagan Sun, their keys, of course, will be getting uh, players like Stu Vanderheide, Adam Eckert, uh, the ball. Those are the two guys that have really been uh, the wrecking crew, if you will, for the Sun. Certainly Stu Vanderheide, who has just had such an incredible season. Uh, some I read somewhere they described him as like a bowling ball on legs, and perhaps that's the best way to put it. This national taekwondo champion is not easy to bring down. Oh, that's for sure. And, and you know, we watched him all year, and, and he played pr pretty well the entire season with a separated shoulder. And we've we seen him just plow over guys. It took five six seven guys to bring him down and it didn't happen one or two times he did that consistently all year and it was one of the reasons why CKOB went out and bought a little plaque for uh, Stu Vanderheiden we uh, presented it to him on our on your morning show as a matter of fact for the unsung hero award because uh, for some reason the Sun kind of overlooked him in the selection of outstanding players he didn't get an award so we felt that he definitely deserved one because let's face it, the Sun wouldn't even be here today without you know, the efforts of uh, many guys like Eckert, Silverman, but in particular, Vanderheide. Yeah, I'd like to touch a little bit on Adam Eckert, uh, Bill Long, as uh, he has been such a key to this team's success. I mean, he's doing their kicking duties. He's uh, went two ways in the uh, provincial final game we saw here two weeks uh, as well. Obviously, for the Hilltops, Adam Eckert's a guy they're going to be paying a lot of attention to today. Oh, I think that uh, Saskatoon will be paying a lot of attention to Adam Eckert and Aaron David. Adam is a player who can beat you deep. Aaron David is going to run those little curl patterns over the middle all day long. And I looked at... Uh, Eckert when they want to get a big play, and I looked at Aaron David when they want to get a first down. Well, as is often the case of championship football games, the ceremonial kickoff just underway, and uh, with those ceremonies done, and we see uh, Okanagan Sun President uh, Bob Lindsay out there, among others, and with uh, that out of the way, we are almost set to go here and play some football. It is Canada Bowl 2000. Let's take one more break, and we'll be back with the kickoff in a moment. More coming up on CKOV 63. Grant Scott along with Bill Long and Matt Shirell on the sidelines. You're listening to live coverage of the Canadian Bowl 2000, the National Junior Football Championship. We are live on CKOV and live worldwide on the internet via CKOV63.com and we certainly welcome in all the family and uh, fans of both football teams that have tuned into our broadcast all over North America today. We are expecting a dandy, beautiful day for football, especially this time of November. When you look outside, maybe a few clouds hanging around, going to be a hazy sky, so the sun certainly won't come into play, but the weatherman has uh, promised has kept the rain away so far, and uh, things are looking pretty good as we see the two teams now uh, hovering around center field for the coin toss to decide who's going to get it. Interesting to note, Bill Long, both teams wearing their dark uniforms. There's not one team that opted to wear their whites today. Obviously, uh, maybe some superstitions here uh, well both teams like to wear those colors that they are their home jerseys the the uniforms that they feel most comfortable in that they think represent their teams a little bit better I think it makes for a very interesting and colorful game actually yeah, and you see the Hilltops in their uh, blue and yellow jerseys, and of course the Okanagan Sun in their traditional brown and orange. And uh, now we just saw the coin toss. We'll wait for the uh, signal from the referee to see who actually won. Uh, in this case, I wonder who wants the ball first. The Hilltops, uh, certainly a team that knows how to score. You think they would like to get a hold of the ball, but on the other hand, the Okanagan Sun may be thinking field position here, and uh, perhaps uh, knowing the struggles of their offense on their first drives, maybe they think give Saskatoon the ball. Let's get it back in a slightly better field position than we may start after a short kickoff return. Well, Saskatoon, I believe, won that toss, and they elected to, uh, they may have elected to defer. We'll find out at, at halftime, but uh, Jay Christensen likes to take the ball. He likes to get the offense going. He likes to have uh, the ball first and move and get things happening. Uh, you know, there's different schools of thought on that. I always preferred to have a uh, kickoff and let the emotional defense get down there and uh, wreck some havoc on an offense in the beginning of the game. Well, the Okanagan Sun, if they do indeed start on defense, we'll see Matt Brown starting at left end on the tackle position. It'll be Travis McKenzie and Kyler Jukes. The right end will be Chris Truscott, who's had a good season this year as well. One thing, though, Chris uh, flagged a couple of times throughout the 
the season for some unsportsmanlike penalties, that extracurricular activity. Certainly, you know, the coaches will be wanting to keep a rein on him for any kind of penalty along that lines. I think any kind of 15-yard penalties in this game are going to be very unfortunate for both teams. You cannot give up any yards. All right, and uh, Matt Shirell, I know uh, you're getting you're down there just as we get set to go. It's uh, looking pretty darn good as uh, these two teams get set to kick off here. Yeah, the noise level's picking up, too. I'm going to have to turn up my radio here, my monitor. Yes, uh, the coin toss was indeed won by the Hilltops, and they did defer. They uh, let the Okanagan Sun make the decision, and the Sun elected to receive the ball. All sorts of dignitaries down here, including uh, Kelowna MP Warner Schmidt. We have Adam Rita, the general manager of the British Columbia Lions, who, of course, have a big game themselves tomorrow in Edmonton. And we'll talk with those gentlemen throughout the broadcast. We're just about ready to go. I'll send it back upstairs, Grant. All right, just seconds away from kickoff. The 2000 Canadian Bowl set to get underway. Number three, Jody Kerr, will be kicking off for the Sun. They have back as deep uh, return man, number 78, Adam Eckert, number seven, Aaron David. As uh, we get set to go here for Canada Bowl 2000, the National Junior Football title is on the line. And the two teams are indeed lined up and ready to go. Kerr puts his foot to it and gets it underway. Looks like Aaron David will take it at about his 15. He's got it, picking up some blocking. He moves to his right side across the 20. Has some room to run. Still going strong into the 30s, about the 37-yard line with his, uh, the Sun. Will scrimmage first and 10 from there. Excellent start to the game. Excellent field position. There was uh, lots of room out there for Aaron David, actually. It was a bit of a scene. They went with a wall return to the right. Saskatoon came down uh, hard. But uh, they managed to close it up before uh, Aaron David got any more yards. All-star quarterback Zach Silverman leading the Okanagan Sun as they get set to go. In the backfield, it will be number 36, Stu Vanderheide, and uh, number 27, Dusty Carragata. At the wideout position, Aaron David, Adam Eckert. Slots will be Jason Farnsworth and Jeff Sheeman as we get set to scrimmage. First and 10, and Silverman hands it off to the big Stu Vanderheide who bowls his way through for about two or three yards. It'll bring up second and about seven. Well, there was an excellent play by the uh, Saskatoon defensive front seven to hold him. It looked like uh, Vandehei was going to be able to slide through there, but Manil, number 61, slid off his block and made the tackle, and then the linebacker core of uh, David and Zur managed to get in and finish him off. Yeah, we'll call it a gain of two for Vanderhei on that play. That will bring up second and eight, scrimmaging just the other side of the 40-yard line. Sask or the Okanagan Sun come up to the line of scrimmage. Zach Silverman sends his receivers into motion, emptying the backfield. He puts it up this time for Eckert on the right side. And the usually sure-handed Adam Eckert, unable to pull that in, brings up a punting situation. I think you have to expect those kind of plays at the very beginning of the game at this level. Guys are going to be nervous. They're going to be a little anxious. Uh, Adam just was uh, so concerned about turning up the field after he made the catch. He forgot to complete the first part, which is make the catch. Yeah, he was uh, covered there by number 36, Tyler Pokeyoye of the Saskatoon Hilltops, but it did look like he had a step on him and uh, had some room to run upfield if he'd been able to pull that in. Tough break there for the Okanagan Sun as they're now forced to punt, facing about third down and eight yards to go. Adam Eckert, Mr. Everything for this team uh, as this season has worn on, will be doing the punting duties. He stands at about his own 25-yard line. Number 78, Andrew Ford is back for the Saskatoon Hilltops. Eckert Gets set, he puts that ball up in the air and it'll be fielded there by number 73. That's Andrew Ginther. He's got the ball and met there immediately by Matt Brown and brought down by the Sun. And that's the way you stuff a kickoff return. We'll take our first break. No score. This is Canada Bowl 2000 live on CKOV 63. Bowl where the Saskatoon Hilltops tried a quick run to uh, Travis Weiss, but it was stuffed immediately by the Okanagan Sun on a defensive line. That was a straight ahead power off the left hand side of the Saskatoon line of scrimmage. They're going to say, We're going to go behind our biggest player, and that's Carson, their offensive tackle, but Sheeman and uh, Darcy Littlewood were more than uh, up for the handle the, the task on that one. 32 is Brad Grenier, 34 Travis Weiss, number 7 Steve Bielan is the uh, starting quarterback for the Sun as they send four men to the right side for the Hilltops, pardon me, and Bielan rolling out to the right side, has an open man there, and it's caught by number 28, Drew Cox, who is hit immediately and pushed down, and the Sun defense gets a big stand there. Excellent start to the game. Saskatoon went with three receivers to the wide side of the field, ran the two outside guys deep, and then brought Cox in across the middle and uh, dumped it off, but the Sun linebacker was right on top of him, made a great play. Boy, we talked about the uh, feeling out process of these two teams, and maybe we've seen that, a couple of tentative starts, certainly no one challenging deep, and uh, still waiting for our first down. 12.05 left to go here in the first quarter of play, and we see Stu Vanderheide, who uh, really turned around the BCFC championship with a huge kick return, back to take this punt 
for the Okanagan Sun. Again, Jody Kerr is set to a punt. He's standing at about the uh, Hilltop 15-yard line. 11 men rushing for the Okanagan Sun as they look to maybe try and block this game early and get the first break, or block this punt early and get the first break. Rush is coming, but plenty of time for Kerr to get the kickoff. It's a low one. It'll bounce. Vanderheide has got to pick it up on the ground. He fumbles the ball, picks it up, met there immediately, but breaks a couple of tackles, so he's got some room to run. Finally tripped up there. He'll start or give the Okanagan Sun the ball about the 48-yard line of the Sun. Well, every time you see a punt return where the, the punt returner is fumbling around a bit with the ball, it, it allows the defensive players, the coverage guys, to get too close. And that's exactly what happened with Saskatoon. They got in too close. Van de Heij broke a tackle, headed to the wide side of the field. And I don't know who the Saskatoon player was. Made a great tackle. Just tripped him up for Stu Van de Heij had a lot of yards off to his right. All right, so first down and 10 for the Sun. They're scrimmaging from their own 48-yard line. Zach Silverman again coming up to the line of scrimmage in the I formation. Karagat in the up back. Van der Heide is deep. And from the snap, it's a pitch out to Vanderheide. He's got some room. Met there again by a couple of hilltops. That big D-line got pressure there. Oh, Sean uh, Brimacombe, number 76, came up from his left defensive end and turned that toss play inside almost immediately. That was a tremendous play on his part. Caused Vanderheide to have to cut back up inside, and by then, the, the flow from the linebackers and defensive line was able to throw him for basically no gain. Yeah, Ryan David, uh, the middle linebacker of the hilltops, got in there quick, too, on that tackle. So you're right. Uh, maybe a yard there, second down and nine. Passing situation for the Okanagan. Sign. We see Jay Christensen and Zach Silverman communicating with hand signals to get this play in. And they now step up to the line of scrimmage. Emptying the backfield. They've got everybody out to take this pass. Three men wide right, three men wide left. Out of the shotgun, Silverman takes the snap, drops back to pass, has a bit of time, puts it up, looking for David. It's a catch. And Aaron David with a first down and more as he crosses the 50 into Hilltop territory. Well, that's a that's a bread and butter play for the Sun. It's just to send six receivers out, bring Aaron David across the middle at around 10 to 12 yards. And you're looking at almost, well, it is a first down coverage there, but Saskatoon's in what we call a cover three. Three guys deep. Let the linebackers cover zones underneath, and with six receivers, there's not enough people out there to cover. Well, the uh, Okanagan Sun have so many talented receivers that Zach Silverman can choose from. As big as that D-line is for the Hilltops, they'll have to get a lot more pressure on Zach Silverman to shut down the passing game today. They stay in the shotgun. First down 10 from the Hilltops 50. Silverman on an option. He pitches it out to Vanderheide, who's met there, breaks a tackle or two, and bowls forward to about the 45-44 yard line of the Hilltops. Yes, uh, the Okanagan Sun are doing a very good job. That was a, an option play. They don't really run a true option. It's more of a Silverman runs out to his right and then pitches it out to Van Heide. The Sun offensive line right now is doing a good job on the interior of the Saskatoon defensive line, but the ends, Clark number 70, Bittacombe number, uh, Brimacombe number 76, they're coming across and coming in behind. They have a lot of speed, those two defensive ends. So that brings up about second down and five. They spot the ball at the Hilltops 45-yard line. Under 10 minutes to play here in the first quarter. No score to report. As the Okanagan Suns stay in the shotgun, Zach Silverman standing at the Hilltops 50 as he gets set to take this snap again. Six receivers in motion. He has some time now under a bit of pressure. He's going to have to scramble out of there. He does. Moves forward, but he'll be brought down short of the first down. It's a decision time for the Sun. Well, that's a smart play by Zach. Uh, he's been uh, victimized a little bit in the past by making a bad decision and throwing interceptions. Uh, in this case, he made the good call. Pull it down, try and get the yardage. Unfortunately, he just got tripped up where he could have had a first down. All right, and down on the sidelines, Matt Charell. Okanagan Sun offensive coordinator Jay Christen, very angry after that play. He thought his quarterback, uh, Zach Silverman, was speared by a Saskatoon player, and he was yelling and letting, letting the referee and the Saskatoon bench know about it. Back up to you guys. All right, so it's third down, about a yard and a half to go, and there we see the tackle coming in, and uh, yeah, a bit of a helmet-to-back uh, connection there, and it did look like Zach may have even felt it on that... Uh, uh, replay. Eighth uh, is third down and about a uh, yard and a half to go. Adam Eckert, of course, uh, broke a huge play in the uh, provincial championship game on a bad snap, turned it about a third and 30 into a first down. I don't know if you'll be seeing uh, those types of heroics on this play as they get set to try and pin the Hilltops deep. Once again, it's Ginther and Ford back to take this punt. And Eckert has time, gets it off, and he angles it over towards Beauty. Andrew Ginther. What a kick in his own end zone. He'll take it, but opts to run out a number of players there, including Sheeman of the Sun, and they push him out of bound. The Hilltops are pinned deep. Well, anytime you can get two kicks away like Adam Eckert has had in the last two, it sure makes your coverage a lot better. He hung that one up. Beautiful kick. Put it down right on the goal line, forced them to have to return it out, and the coverage guys were there in lots of time. Boy, it just seems like anything you give Adam Eckert, he can handle. Matt Charell, once again, down on the sidelines. Yeah, I guess Jay Christensen is going to be in an angry mood today. He was yelling at the referees after that play, too. I don't know if you guys noticed it up in the booth, but it appeared to be down in the field that Saskatoon was offside on that uh, third down punt. 
and once again Jay Christensen let the referee know about it. Well, I'll tell you what, I think uh, the whole crowd saw that too, because you could hear some moaning and ooing coming out of the crowd, wondering where the flag was, but so far the Zebras have uh, kept the old orange flag in the pocket, and uh, they get the ball scrimmage from the 20-yard line, the Saskatoon Hilltops do, as uh, the punt rule in junior football allows them to run it out of their end zone, and no matter where they get brought down, they can get at least to the 20. First and 10, and Beeland hands it off. That's uh, number 34, Travis Weiss with the ball, and he'll plow forward about five, six yards on that play. Now this is a play that I think Saskatoon could have a little bit of success with. It's a trap play back to the uh, Belan starts back out to his left and then traps back to his right. A bit of a counter, and you get those big offensive linemen trap blocking on the small defensive line for the offensive. The Okanagan Sun. You can see the guard, the guard that pulling here, and a nice little seam for Grenier to, to run through on that one. Second down, we'll call it five yards to go for the Saskatoon Hilltops. Steve Belan is up over the line of scrimmage. Uh, it is uh, Brad Grenier, the only back out there, and he'll get the ball. The handoff has some room up the middle and moves very close indeed. It has a first down to about the 35-yard uh, line of the Okanagans or of the Saskatoon Hilltops. Straight up the middle, one back, no lead blocker, but his offensive lineman really fired out and did a number on the defensive line for the Okanagan. Some of that, uh, very quick, very quick to the line, fast little feet. Uh, I'd be interested to see how much more he gets the ball. Well, worth mentioning as well, just to our radio listeners, that uh, this game is also being shown on Shaw Cable, and they are picking up our uh, sound as well, so we certainly welcome the audience on uh, television tuned in today. 7.03 to go, first and 10, the Hilltops from their own 34-yard line. Beeland back to pass, he's got lots of time, puts it up, an open man there, it's caught by number 73, that's Andrew Ginther, and very close to another Hilltop first down. Ginther just came down the short side of the field, ran a curl pattern into the middle, and... Uh, Beeland threw it a little bit high. Ginther had to make a great catch to go up and get it, though. Certainly good hands shown there by Andrew Ginther. You bet. It uh, brings up a, a second down and very short, they mark it as. Would have thought he actually had enough, but the placement showing it at about the 43-yard line. And uh, very, very close there as uh, he is finally brought down. So we'll see what they do in short yardage. Steve Beeland calling out signals. He'll keep it himself, plow forward, and have the first down and a few yards more as uh, the Hilltops keep their drive alive. And once again, Matt Shirell. Yeah, very interesting story about uh, the Saskatoon quarterback, Steve Beeland. Two days ago, when they were practicing at the Mission Sports Fields, the Saskatoon general manager phoned the game director uh, for the Sun, Lloyd Congdon. He wanted Lloyd to bring the ball, the game ball, over to the Saskatoon practice at the Mission Sports Fields. The quarterback, Steve Beeland, apparently doesn't like going into a game with a football he's never handled. Uh, by the way, Lloyd Congdon said, forget about it. First down 10 for the Hilltops. They're uh, inside their own territory at about the 44-yard line, making 44 and a half. But a good drive being put together here by the toppers. Steve Beeland, he'll throw it out to the right side. That's Brad Grenier with the ball. Lots of room to run, and he's into open field now, into Sun territory across the 40-yard uh, line, or at down near the 40. Big gain there, and the Hilltops starting to flex their muscles. Well, that was a toss to the left. No one's Prairie team front toss plays. Very seldom will they ever run it wide. They'll like to run their toss play more or less just off the tackle, the offensive tackle. In this case, the Okanagan Sun defensive lineman, I believe it was Trusta, came, came up. Saskatoon kicked him out. Grenier spun in, inside, and there was a seam in there. Saskatoon walled off the rest of the flow of the Okanagan Sun defense, and he spun out of a couple of tackles and made a great gain. Well, the Hilltops looking very strong now as they scrimmage first down and 10 from the Sun 41. Once again, Steve Beeland under the ball. And he'll fake the handoff, looking to throw. This time he does put it up. That's uh, 34. Travis Weiss with the ball, and he's met there again. Hilltop's really starting to huge, grab huge chunks of yard with every play here. Play action pass. If you have a running game, you can play action pass. They fake the power. Uh, Weiss, the fullback, goes out into the flats on the short side of the field. Beeland turns around, just drops in the ball. It's a long way for that linebacker to come all the way over and cover him. That's, it's one-on-one -on -one coverage then. And uh, Weiss just turned up the field, spun out. Spun out of one tackle, and it took two or three more, son, to bring him down. First down, 10 once again for the uh, Saskatoon Hilltops as they continue this very impressive drive, which began on their own 20. They're now sitting on the Sun 26-yard line. Once again, Steve Beeland, just one man in the backfield. That's Brad Grenier, number 32. Beeland calling signals. He's got four men at the line, fakes the pass, hands it off to Grenier, who uh, gets some room, breaks out on that trap, and he's in open field. Finally brought down there by Doug Hartle, number 25. That was a draw play. The single back looked like a, a bit of a draw play. It looked like he was gonna get stopped behind the line of scrimmage, but he managed to spin out. He does a great job, Grindy is spinning out of tackles and then heading off to his left, back to the short side of the field for another big game. Well, he's certainly uh, rather diminutive when you compare him to the size of the uh, Saskatoon Hilltops offensive line, but he's uh, proved himself uh, rather elusive today as uh, he's been chewing up big hunks of yard every time he's touched the ball since uh, this drive has began. And certainly Saskatoon looking every bit the, prow uh, the power team that we heard about coming into this contest. They're now first down and 10 from the Sun 11. Big 
key play here for the Okanagan Sun defense if they look to keep the Hilltops uh, from scoring seven. There's Beeland. He pitches it out again to Grenier. He's got the ball looking for some room on the left side. Finally met there by a number of players, including uh, Jared Hoover, number 21, stopping him about after about a four-yard game. That was the same toss play that they ran earlier where they pull both of their guards and hook them around the offensive tackle and try and cut off the pursuit and it really puts a lot of pressure on the defensive secondary for the Sun to come up and make the tackle. In this case, Hoover, number 21, made a great play coming up in an open field tackle, basically, on the short side of the field. But uh, Saskatoon has got some big offensive linemen, and they're moving them around, and if the Sun don't get in there and start uh, stopping these guys from pulling, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. Second down and about eight yards to go. Steve Beeland once again under the ball. Just Grenier in the backfield, and he hands it off on a reverse. That is uh, number 23 for the Sun. Bill Baker taking that ball. He'll be stopped short of a touchdown, but very close to another first down. Well, at this time, I'm really kind of glad we have a shot cable covering here because we have a monitor. We can get replays, and I didn't see the little misdirection on that one. That was an excellent, excellent play. Uh, Cox, the slot back, just came across, took the, took the handoff, and spun right around the, the short side of the field. Didn't really catch the sun napping at all. They were over there to make the tackle. All right, and it looks like about third down, a yard and a half to go here. About 3.20 left in the first quarter. And the Steve Belan is still out there. It does not look like they're going to take the save three points. They are going for it here. A big play here early in this contest. Uh, Tom Sargent, this Hilltops head coach, said his team needed five big plays to win. It certainly could be one of them here. Certainly a key one for the Sun defense as well. Belan under the ball. He hands it off. That's Weiss with the ball. Plows through and is in. Touchdown. Saskatoon Hilltops, they score first. Saskatoon went with a, a full house backfield, put three players in the backfield. Been even number uh, number 52, Brian Gabert, came in as the fullback, and they just plowed ahead over the right tackle of the Saskatoon offensive line, and that's just merely a, a matter of putting more meat in the in the in the line of scrimmage than the defense has, and it really was a. A simple touchdown for Saskatoon to score. He had a struggle to get in, but there was no doubt he was in. Yeah, Ryan Scheman looked like he had a chance uh, at stopping him just behind the uh, line of scrimmage, but it was unable to get more than a hand on his foot, and that certainly wasn't going to stop Travis Weiss on that play. Hilltops up 6 nothing as they go for the point after, or kicker Jody Kerr. As that ball comes back, snap is down, it's up and through, and we'll take another break. The score, Hilltop 7, Okanagan Sun nothing. You're listening to the 2000 Canadian Bowl live on CKOV. But it's a 7-0 Hilltops lead after a three-yard run by number 34, Travis Weiss. And uh, Bill Long, we certainly saw the power of that O-line there, and you touched on it describing the play. They just simply pushed back the Okanagan Suns defense and uh, found the room to get into the end zone. And I'll tell you what, that certainly makes things different because every time they face a third and one, there's a team that thinks they can uh, certainly move and get that yard. Now you're not going to get down to the three-yard line and kick a, kick a field goal in this game. And uh, Jody Kerr takes that in a very wise move. They went for a short kick, and it looked like for a minute there that uh, the Okanagan Sun player was going to field that, which would have prevented the uh, on or the out of bounds kick. That penalty will force them back, and a chance for better field position here for the Sun. Well, that's an interesting call by Saskatoon. They score early, and they want to get the ball back right away. They went for a short kick. Uh, they did catch the Okanagan Sun, not expecting that. But uh, unfortunately, the ball was kicked about five or six yards too far down the field, and it went too high and out of bounds. So the Sun's going to get the ball exactly where it went out. Yeah, Chris Nagy was actually uh, the player closest to that. And you could, I think maybe one of the coaches even yelled at him because you could see him Absolutely. put his hands up as if to catch it and then suddenly pulled him away to let that uh, errant kick sail out of bounds. So the Sun will scrimmage from their 40-yard line, taking it from where it went out, essentially. There's 250 to go here in the first quarter. Really important now for the Okanagan Sun to get a drive here after the Hilltops have found their legs and really moved the ball well on that last drive. So first and 10 out of the I formation. Silverman hands it off to Vanderheide. He'll plow forward, but only get about two or three yards. Still on his feet, though. And that's one thing the Hilltops will soon learn is how tough it is to tackle Stu Vanderheide, but they did hold him to a short gain there. Well, the Sun went for a straight-ahead running play just off the right tackle. Uh, the middle linebacker, Ryan David, came in and made a great read, came up, stepped up into the hole, but he didn't wrap up on Van de Heide, and Van de Heide spun off of him and almost, well, he could have broken away, except that there was a lot of Saskatoon players around, but that's something Saskatoon's going to have to do to Van de Heide. They can't just hit him and expect him to fall over. He has been so impressive breaking tackles this year, really unlike uh, anything I've seen from any player at this level. Van der Heide just seems to never go down in the first hit. Still, big play here, second down five for the Sun. Out of the shotgun formation, some pressure coming to Silverman there. He puts it up, though, and uh, that throw looked like it might have been either for Van der Heide or Farnsworth. Either way, it falls incomplete, and the Sun are punting it after two quick plays. The Sun went with six receivers on that. That play sent the two outside receivers on both sides of the field deep and then ran Van de Heide, the running back out into a little curl on the short side of the field and Farnsworth the slot back came across from his left and it really was hard to decide who the ball was for but uh, if Farnsworth had caught it I think he would have been just nailed by the outside linebacker for uh, 
for Saskatoon. But anyway, Saskatoon had uh, excellent coverage on that. Ginther and Ford once again back to take this kick for the Saskatoon Hilltops. Adam Eckert standing at about his own 30-yard line to take this snap. And once again, the Hilltops will get the ball. They send their two men in motion. This is a standard punt cover uh, for the Sun. And Adam Eckert, who had a beauty last time, shanks this one. It will go out of bounds at about the, actually it stays in bounds after taking a friendly bounce. And out of about the 43, we'll sort this all out, take another break. It's 7-0 Hilltops. You're listening to the 2000 Canadian Bowl live on CKOB. Ball in play, quickly ran one play as uh, Travis Weiss took a uh, running play and uh, he must have broke four or five tackles. We're raving about Vanderhyde, but Weiss breaking tackles there and uh, although he was held to no gain, he almost broke free. Well, they lined up with one back in the backfield and Weiss uh, sort of set off as a slot back and then they tried an inside handoff to him, but the Sun defensive was there, but they've got to wrap up. He spun out of, let's say, three or four tackles even though he was eventually thrown for a yard loss. Second and 11, 35 seconds left in the first quarter. Beeland sending four men to the right side as one on the left side. He drops back to pass. He's got an open man, but puts it up and wide open on the right side there was number 73, Andrew Ginther, but that pass overthrown. Yeah, Ginther, the wide receiver, who's very, very quick, ran down the, the far side of the field on the right side and did an out at around 15, 15 yards, looking for the first down. He was open, had lots of space, but Belan just threw it too far in front of him, and uh, Belan has a good arm, but let's, he's going to have to settle down and uh, start getting the ball on the money for these guys. All right, so that brings up a punting situation for the uh, Hilltops. They'll face about third and 11, call it 11 and a half. Jody Kerr will do the punting. Stu Vanderheide, the lone man back for the Sun as they once again have 11 men up front and uh, perhaps look for a block. A bit of an interesting blocking scheme there for the Hilltops with uh, four men in the backfield kind of as their second line of defense. Jody Kerr calling out the signals. He takes a snap. It's a low one, picks it up off the ground, gets it clean and gets it away as Vanderheide will take it at about his own 35 to the 40. He's looking for some blocking, picks it up, has some room to run, finally getting tackled or tied up there at about midfield by a number of Hilltops and he'll get brought down there and that will bring an end to the first quarter. We'll take a break. The score, Hilltop 7, Okanagan Sun, no score. This is the 2000 Canada Bowl, live on CKOV. Lines, Matt Shirell is with uh, BCFC Commissioner Paul Short. Paul Short, uh, Okanagan Sun, uh, losing 7 0. Uh, your comments so far? Well, Hilltop's got a good football team, and that drive on the score was very good. It's running, and that's their strength is their old line. So I guess it was expected. We just have to pick it up now and get a few first downs ourselves. Yeah, you mentioned the old line. Those guys are huge. They're big, real big, real big. And they got uh, white legs, so you know there's not a lot of sun out there. Back up to you guys. All right, here goes Silverman in the shotgun. First down and 10 for the Sun there in Hilltop territory and need to score in this time. But under pressure, Silverman is dragged down behind the line of scrimmage there by uh, number 76 from the uh, Hilltop's Sean Brimacombe managed to track down Silverman there. Well, there was good coverage downfield as the Sun were running crossing patterns by their two inside receivers. And Silverman was looking, hoping that one of them could spring open, but they didn't. So he tucked it in, decided to run. He's not going to throw a bad pass. You know, he's not going to try and put the ball up there where it shouldn't be. But Brimcombe, number 76, he didn't buy it at all. He did a great job of staying at home. And it did look like Silverman had some room to run, but uh, Brimacombe made the tackle. Yeah, almost as if Silverman took just a heartbeat too long to decide to run. And by the time he pulled it down, Brimacombe was there to close. Now underneath the center, first or second down and 13, Silverman dropping back to pass again. He's under some pressure and uh, finally wrapped up there. Another big loss and a big defensive play by the Hilltops. Yes, there's a big sack at number, number 61, Joey Mignel. He was up against Eric Allum, and uh, he just pushed Allum back about four or five yards into the backfield. And, and Silverman, and when he was rolling out to his left, really ran right into the, uh, the defensive player. He didn't have to chase uh, Silverman down very much. Uh, he managed to drag him back. It was probably about his... Oh, it was about a nine, ten yard loss. Yeah, they're certainly going in the wrong way in this uh, drive as uh, the Hilltop or the Saskatoon or the Okanagan Sun, pardon me, have had a hard time getting their offense on track here in this contest now into the second quarter. We've commented on that. They often don't score early. Uh, they tend to be a come from behind or second half team, but they certainly don't want to fall behind here. It is uh, Adam Eckert once again set the kick, standing at his own 30 yard line, third and long. And he takes it, puts it up, and again. Gets a decent kick away this time. That'll be taken by number. It's fumbled there by uh, the uh, Hilltops on that kickoff. Finally met there. He's, uh, he managed to get back on. That was 78, Andrew Ford uh, mishandling that punt. Well, he fielded it cleanly, and then he uh, saw a big brown shirt right in his face as he started to head off to his left, and he just dropped the ball. Luckily, luckily for Saskatoon, he was able to crawl back on his hands and knees to get the ball as there was a lot of Sun players around who would have been more than happy to pick that one up. All right, let's go back down to Matt Shirell. 
Grant, uh, staging uh, something in this, the magnitude of this Canadian Bowl, it's it's a huge undertaking, no doubt about it. About 100 volunteers working, uh, the painting the fields, uh, bringing in the temporary stands, and I'll, I'll have a little bit more on that in a second. Back up to you. All right, first down 10 for the Hilltops from the 36, and they try that uh, little counter again to Weiss, and he's got tons of room to run. He'll have a first down and more as he's finally dragged down by Doug Hartle. Yes, that's an inside uh, inside trap, a counter play where they line up Weiss as a slot back on the right-hand side. They fake the pitch to the left, or sorry, fake the pitch to the right, and then they cut it back into the left, and there's a nice little seam through the line of scrimmage as the offensive linemen are all blocking down and then kicking out. And uh, what it does is it gets these big offensive linemen from Saskatoon blocking the smaller defensive lineman from the sun on the side and that is really tough on the front seven and ryan sheeman uh ryan folk are going to have a tough time trying to make all these tackles so it's first down 10 for the hilltops after that uh, first down play gained them about 11 yards they're now on the 49 yard line they're on 49 bland underneath the ball once again he hands it off to weiss who's looking for some room finally met there by a number of okanagan sun players the d-line stood up to the test that time they did saskatoon didn't try anything fancy on that one they were just straight ahead blocking and this is a point that uh, we were making earlier in the game that the smaller defensive linemen from the sun are able to slide off of those direct blocks all right back down to maturell yeah back on that point i was making earlier um, 4,000 fans here. They need a lot to eat and a lot to drink. Uh, the crew here has 600 dozen beer, 49 porta potties. There's 2,500 temporary seats, 120 dozen wieners, and they expect to serve about 2,000 cups of coffee. 600 dozen beer sounds like the last party at your place, Matt. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Second down and about eight. Beeline back to pass out of the shotgun, puts that ball up, and that will fall short as uh, the uh, Okanagan Sun defense holds, and uh, the Hilltops will have to punt. Well, that was the first time that Beelands really tried to throw the ball down down the field any distance, even though it was about 15, 16 yards over the middle. He, he's not looking particularly comfortable back there. He, he threw this one in the dirt. Uh, might be throwing a little bit off of his back foot, but uh, he's a much better quarterback throwing the ball than he has shown uh, so far today. Well, if the, if the Okanagan Sun can hold the Hilltops to short gains on first down and force them into that passing situation, that so far uh, seems to be where the uh, Sun have found most of their success defensively. Stu Vanderhyde standing at about his own 25 as Jody Kerr gets set to take this snap. Third and nine for the Hilltops. A scrimmage at their hill, uh, the Hilltops 50. A lot of pressure coming from the Sun, but they really don't get to him. That punt is a little short. Vanderhyde at about the 35, and the flag is down. That'll be no yards, but Vanderhyde still on his feet as he's looking to break outside. Finally tripped up there, but uh, there is a flag on the play, and we'll get that sorted out. We'll take a break. It is 7-0 Hilltops. You're listening to the 2000 Canadian Bowl on CKLV. 11.05 to go here in the second quarter. Hilltops up 7-0. The Sun with the ball at their own 50-yard line as they scrimmage first down and 10, looking to get something going offensively. They've really been struggling with the ball so far. They flood the field with six receivers. Silverman back to pass, puts it up. There's Heron with the catch at the 45. First down, Sun. Well, that's an example of sending six receivers out against his own defense, and they, they can't cover all the zones. There's a, a zones. There's a big seam on the right-hand side, and Heron just ran down the field at 10 yards and waved his hands in the air and said, hey, throw me the ball. And there was nobody around him that took the corner to come up and make the tackle on that one, and I'm ranking Morley Miller. And certainly with uh, some time back there, Silverman will be able to pick apart that Hilltop secondary. Into Hilltop territory, the Sun first and 10 from the Topper's 45-yard line. Again, flooding everybody out. Uh, he's under some pressure, though. Steps up, puts it up, and there's Aaron David. He catches it, takes a step back, and may actually have lost the first down. He's very close to the marker, though. I think he did manage to get the first down there, but there's another example. Throwing underneath the coverage, just ran a little curl pattern on the right-hand side. Zach stepped up into the pocket, but he did a great job when he was stepping up of keeping his eyes downfield and looking for receivers rather than just tuck the ball under his arm and go. And he, he hit Aaron David on his classic pattern, the little 10-yard curl. All right, so it is indeed a first down. Aaron David took a step back after the catch, which is why I thought maybe he took a, a yard away from his gain, but not the case. First and 10, Silverman this time under the center. He's got two men in the backfield. As he drops back to pass again, he's got some time, putting it up for Adam Eckert. He's open right now. That throw caught, and he's still on his feet. Eckert looking for the end zone. Finally, he's in there. Touchdown, Sun! Adam Eckert ran a little out pattern on the left-hand side. It was about 15 yards down the field. Silverman put a lot of air in that ball. He threw it to a spot rather than throwing it to the player, but Eckert was wide open, right in between the coverage of the halfback up close and the cornerback deep. Once Eckert catches the ball, he spins out of a tackle, and then 
races down the sideline and dives into the corner, dives into the corner for the touchdown. All right, and boy, your, your superstars have got to make the big plays in this kind of game, and a great play there as Eckert found a seam open between three defenders of the Hilltops, and he just did the rest himself as he was not going to be stopped. What a great effort there. Silverman, you see, putting the ball up and then finally hitting Eckert, who uh, manages, to, as I said, sit into that seam and uh, break through to the end zone. The point after is good as well, and this game is tied. We'll take a break. You're listening to Canada Bowl 2000 live on CKLV 63. To the Apple Bowl, I'm Grant Scott along with Bill Long and Matt Shirell, the Okanagan son, have just tied this contest with a beautiful pass and run play. Silverman to Eckert. It is 7-7. The clock showing 10.06 to go here in the second quarter. The Saskatoon Hilltops have given up their first touchdown of the playoffs. They've only been, or only get, had only given up one point previous to this game in the playoffs, and we'll see how that affects the psyche of their defense and the offense as they now suddenly face a tie game. Eckert puts it up. That'll be taken there by Weiss, number 34. He's under it at the 20. Picking up some blocking, looking for some room. He's got some open field now, and look out. Finally tied up there by a number of players. Corey Weiss in there to push down Travis Weiss, but the Hilltops will scrimmage from both their 34-yard line. Oh, that, that run back had the potential to go a long way as they started from the short left side of the field, ran it back out to the wide side to the right, and it was very disciplined, contained by the Okanagan Sun that forced him finally inside into where the rest of the defenders were. All right, Matt Charrell down sideline with Jay Christensen. Jay Christensen, once again, you guys uh, started off a little bit slowly, fell behind 7 nothing, but uh, obviously a huge touchdown pass there to Eckert. Well, you know, the bottom line with our offense is trying to get the balls in the hands. The guys are going to make the play. Uh, you know, sooner or later, Vanderheide's going to pop up for a big one. And, I mean, any time uh, Adam Eckert or Aaron David touch the ball, big things happen. Back up to you guys. First down 10 for the Hilltops. Belan under the ball. He pitches it out. This time it's uh, taken there. Oh, big gain there by Grenier, number 32, as he moves about 12 yards on that play, just plowing up the middle. That's their toss play left again where they a quick toss and they cut it back up inside the offensive tackle who pushes out the defensive end and they create a nice seam through there. Grenier is six, seven, eight yards down the field before Sheeman or Folk or Littlewood, any of the linebackers can any, get anywhere near him. Uh, if they can continue to run that play today, they're going to have a very successful afternoon. First down, 10 for the Hilltops from the Saskatoon 47-yard line. As they get set to scrimmage, b -Lan is under the ball. He's got a ton of men to the left side. Finally, it's uh, given to Weiss, who's tied up there, and that is key for the Sun as they held him to short yardage on that first down play. Well, that's the same play that they ran before. Uh, the Okanagan Sun defense is proving right now that you can uh, you can beat us on the first time, but don't don't be uh, so cocky as to come back and try and run that same play two times in a row because they are going to learn. Uh, Saskatoon has to save that play and run it maybe every two or three times a series, but save it for moments. Don't try and uh, overdo it. It is second down seven now for the Saskatoon Hilltop, scrimmaging from just uh, the Okanagan side of the Hilltop's 50-yard line. And Belan this time in a shotgun. Will it be a pass? They've also uh, run out of this uh, formation as well today, but this time it is a pass. Belan's got some open men. Wide open there is number 73, Ginther, who's still on his feet and running into Hill or Okanagan Sun territory as another Hilltop first down comes. Three receivers to the wide side of the field, off to the right. Anytime you see a three or four receiver set in an offense you know there's going to be crossing guys coming underneath guys clearing out going deep Ginther comes around underneath catches the little hook pattern of 10 11 yards but has the speed to turn it up the field in between the hash marks and those little plays they can go a long way if you're not on the ball and make the tackle well we certainly know the Saskatoon Hilltops can score a ton of points and they're starting to put together another impressive drive here into Sun Territory on the Okanagan 42. First and 10. Belan under the ball. Just uh, it is Grenier in the backfield alone. And he'll take this pitch to the left side, but flags everywhere. Looks like early movement by the Hilltops. Uh, there was a couple of guys dancing at the uh, left side of the line of scrimmage there. One from Saskatoon, one from the Sun. Uh, I think that they're going to call it against Saskatoon for a procedure penalty against the uh, left offensive tackle. And indeed, that is the case as we get the signal. And uh, it'll be first down and 15. A bit of a break there, obviously, for the Okanagan Sun. But again, the key to uh, their defensive success has got to be holding them to short yardage because the Hilltops so far have been very successful on first down, chewing up huge chunks of yardage. Well, just as Victoria did two weeks ago against the Sun, Victoria constantly found themselves in second and three, second and four. And any time a well-balanced offense like Saskatoon's can find themselves in that position, it's going to make it very difficult on whatever defense they're playing against. They're now back on the Okanagan 47, first and 15, as b drops back to pass. And again, a flag on the play, and uh, possibly movement again because it was blown down quickly, but we'll wait and see what the signal is from the referees. These are the first two penalties of the game, a penalty-free first quarter played by these two teams. Well, I think they're getting called for procedure again. They weren't set long enough. They came up to the ball very quickly and the offensive line didn't go down into a three-point stance. They just went in a quick set, and they actually 
uh, just didn't set for the one second they need. All right, Matt Charrell once again on the sideline. Uh, just as earlier, Okanagan Sun offensive coordinator Jake Christensen was a little upset. Actually, he was upset at the referees, but the, uh, his counterpart, at least the offensive line coach of the Sassoon Hillcops, he was screaming at his offensive line there to get set, get set. Back up, you guys. First down, 20 now. Scott Beelan scrimmaging from the Sun 51-yard line again. Back to pass. No pressure on. He's got time to throw, and he's found a man. That's Ford there. Wide open. A big gain again on first down as they take about 15 yards back. The same play that they completed against their two plays ago, they completed the other side to Ford. He says the wide receiver curls around. Everybody's cleared out. The Sun have to respect the deep. The, the players going deep, and so they, they leave underneath open. The Sun and Saskatoon both have receivers that can take those short little curl patterns and make big plays. All right, it is now second down. We'll call it about five yards to go. Big play here for the Okanagan Sun defense as they try to get the ball back in the hands of their offense. Scott or Steve Bielan underneath the center calling out signals. He's sending everyone left and they pitch left to Weiss or that is Grenier rather and he's got first down yardage and more as the Hilltops convert a first and 20 and keep this drive alive. Very impressive. Well, seeing that play again didn't surprise me at all. It's one that they've had a lot of success with. The toss to the short side of the field and uh, cutting it back up inside. You've got great big offensive linemen cutting uh, Sheeman and Folk, getting them out of the play, and it's a defensive secondary for the Okanagan Sun that's actually having to come up and make the tackles. From the 25 of the Okanagan Sun, the Hilltops are first down and 10, and boy, when they start clicking, they do look like they can move the ball at will as they've done so far throughout their entire season and now here against the Okanagan as well. It is first and 10. That will be uh, actually no flags at all. There finally a flag comes in. There was clearly some early movement on that play as finally Weiss is dragged down well behind the line of scrimmage, but that was a broken play right from the start, Bill. Yes, I think they're going to get called for uh, a procedure offside for Saskatoon. Their slot back came in a little bit early. I don't know whether the Sun will uh, accept this penalty or uh, take the result of the play, which was about a six-yard loss. Yeah, I guess it depends on whether or not the play was actually blown dead, as can happen on a procedure, but the referees uh, seem to be letting the play go. So we're going to let all this get sorted out. And uh, if, as you mentioned, indeed, if it was a uh, allowed to be stand, or rather, if it is allowed to stand as a play, then obviously the Sun are just going to uh, decline the penalty and take it where it stands. But they seem to be discussing it, and uh, we've yet to get a signal one way or the other from the officials as to what the penalty was and uh, where we're going to scrimmage from. Uh, as a matter of fact, they've all gone away from the ball. There's nobody standing anywhere, so we're waiting to get this all worked out. Well, apparently, and it's now it's against the, the uh, Okanagan Sun, and that is a bit of a surprise because clearly uh, number 63 for the Hilltops jumped early on that play. But uh, perhaps they're arguing he was uh, pulled offside. But uh, either way, I don't think the Sun will be too happy with that play. A bit of a surprise there. Yeah, I didn't see the Okanagan Sun player that moved. He must have been in the interior of the uh, defensive line. Yeah, Chris Sutherland, the right tackle, definitely moved early, but uh, they called the Sun on that penalty. First down, five. So the Hilltops get the break on this one from the 20. VLAN once again under center. And again, it's the Weiss as he's met there immediately and shoved backwards. A number of Okanagan Sun there. That was a key play there. Well, something's becoming quite apparent here with respect to the Okanagan Sun defensive line, and that's if you're going to run a straight-ahead power or just straight-ahead blocking against them, they're going to be able to handle it. Once Saskatoon goes to the tosses and the counters and the traps where they got these big offensive linemen moving from side to side, the Sun are having a difficult time. They stuffed them on that one. I believe that was Travis McKenzie just stepped up into the hole, and they got zero yards from that. Well, another key play here. The Hilltops looking to take the lead once again. They're on the Okanagan Sun 19. Second down, we'll call it four and a half. Two men in the backfield. Steve Bielan is calling signals. He sends Weiss in motion. And this time is back to pass. Puts it up there. Has an open man. It's caught by Weiss. And he'll be very close to a first down. Indeed, I think he did get it. Yes, he did. He managed to just roll and stretch that ball out as he went out of bounds. Uh, coming out of the backfield, just a little play action pass. But he made a great catch. The ball was a little bit low. And he caught it down around his knees. And he managed to make the catch and turn it up the field at the same time. Uh, but when you can run the ball, you can run play action passes like this. And it took, a great, it took a great play by the Sun to be able to make the tackle and stop, stop him from turning it up for even more yards. Well, no surprise to see the strength of this uh, ground game of the Hilltops, but uh, perhaps what is a surpri uh, surprise has been the performance in the passing department by Steve Beeline, who's not looked sharp throwing the ball at all today. Well, he's played much better in the last two series than he did at the beginning of the game. 5.15 to go here in the first half. 7-7 the score, but the Hilltops threatening first and 10 from the Sun 15. That'll be Grenier with the ball. He breaks one tackle, breaks another tackle. It's up high and still moving. The ball's loose. It's come loose, and the Okanagan Sun have it. Don't know who's got it. Number 10, it looks like, has the ball for the Sun. Are they going to say it was dead? We're going to have to wait for a whistle here, but I don't see anybody jumping off the field. We may have well had an early whistle, and what a tough break there for the Sun. Oh, if they... If, oh, this... 
This is a big play. All right. Grenier took the ball outside, broke a couple of tackles, but still managed to get out to the short side of the field on the right-hand side. And uh, he fumbled that ball. Yeah, that was a fumble. He got hit on the second or third guy that came in, and you could see the ball pop up in the air right into a stunned player. All right, we'll get a, get a chance to see it again here as the two teams come up the line of scrimmage. I don't see how they could have at all thought he was down on that play. But uh, be that as it may, the Sun got to deal with it. It's second down now. Oh. And they run it off to Grenier again. This time he stopped short, but very close to a first down. And boy, when we caught the replay there, that uh, was uh, clearly a poor call by the officials. Matt Terrell down on the sidelines. Yeah, I don't need a replay, Grant. I was right on the sidelines. That was a 100% all the way fumble. The ball never hit the ground, but the guy, the, the guy was not down. He was still going forward. Just a horrible call by the officials. Well, it's certainly a uh, tough break for the Okanagan Sun there as they had a chance to get the ball back and stop the Hilltops. Boy, oh boy, you really do got to wonder there. I mean, uh, you hate to be critical of the officials, but with such a key play at such a key point in the game, a 7-7 tie, you hate to see them blow a call like that, but clearly that's what happened. The Sun get hurt, but the defense has got to deal with it, and they'll put up a stand here. Yeah, it is unfortunate, uh, but uh, unfortunately... Uh uh, they're going to have to just put that out of their heads. They can't. The coaching staff and Sun can't fixate on that. The players can't fixate on that because they have a very important series going right here. Now, ironically enough, it didn't look like the uh, defense of the Okanagan Sun or even the coaching staff seemed too upset about that call. Um, perhaps not even as angry as we were about it when we saw the play. And with a measurement, it's a first down for the Hilltop, so they managed to keep that drive alive. And indeed, from our vantage point, aided by a non-call. And uh, they are now threatening inside the five. It's going to be very difficult for the Sun defense to stop this very potent offensive line of the Hilltops from just pushing them backwards. Yeah, they're going to line up in their full house back there with three, three players in the back. 427 to go here in the second quarter and as you mentioned three in the backfield Beeland under the uh, under the center They said two men in motion this time three in motion to the right side But Beeland keeps it he plows for it is in there touchdown Hilltops Yes, they've set the running backs out in motion to the short side of the field in behind where they have the tight end And it looked like all the beef was going over there and Beeland just took the snap took a step back and headed off back to his left in behind the guard and uh, while he didn't walk into the end zone he struggled he's strong enough and powerful enough to be able to get in so the Saskatoon Hilltops retake the lead here with about four and a half minutes to go in the second quarter as uh, this will be certainly the much talked about play as this game wears down will be the uh, non-call by the officials or the early whistle and that uh, may indeed be the case if the officials just blew it quick there's no way you can allow the play to continue on Jody Kirk puts that kick up the point after is good and uh, there is actually a flag on the play but we'll take a break and get it sorted out we'll be back with more it's currently 13-7 Hilltops you're listening to Canada Bowl 2000 on CKOV Okanagan Sun so the kick stands make it 14-7 Hilltops there is 4-16 to go in the second quarter as uh, the Okanagan Sun now have to deal with uh, well, what was indeed a bit of a tough call an early whistle by the officials negated a fumble that the Sun had recovered and boy what a difference that would have made in this contest but as you mentioned Bill it is now water under the bridge and the uh, Sun had just got to bear down and try and get points on the board here before the half well this is going to be a real test of uh, the Sun coaching staff and how they can uh, motivate their players to forget the bad plays and focus on the good ones uh, yes, it is unfortunate, but uh, I'm not even going to talk about that play anymore because it's just getting me <laughs> mad thinking about it. All right, so Jody Kerr set the kick off. The ball at the 50, and deep it's Eckert and David once again. It's another short kick, and it's going to fall in the ground, but Aaron David will take it at about the 25-yard line, looking for some room to the right side. He's still on his feet as he cuts back up the middle and then finally dragged down about the 35-yard line. That's where the Sun will start this drive. Well, anytime you get a penalty added on to the kickoff, uh, it allows a few more options for the kicking team to to experiment with and what they did there was try to chip it up to the high to the right side not a short kick but kind of a medium kick where it falls in between the return the returners at the back and their blockers and uh, it creates some confusion and that ball did hit the ground and Aaron David did have to run up 15 yards to get it and Saskatoon was right on top of them so uh, they are fooling around a little bit with the kick I think that Saskatoon's a little leery of kicking the ball deep to Eckert and Aaron David and letting them have a big run yeah they certainly are uh, playing it cautiously we saw after their first touchdown they did that short kick as well they wound up going out of bounds so here we go the sun from their own 34 yard line it's first down and 10 four minutes to go in the quarter and it's a pitch out to Vanderheide. great play he's got lots of room to run if he breaks a tackle he's in open field but he'll be very close to a first down call it a gain of eight a little shuttle pass to the inside similar to what Saskatoon's been running only this is uh, rather than a handoff it's a it's an inside flip uh, it goes down as a, a forward pass statistic for the quarterback, but uh, Saskatoon were flowing very heavily over to the, the Okanagan Sun la left, and uh, Van de Heide just took the pitch back inside, headed out, and it had lots of room to work with. Uh, the speedy uh, 
defensive backs for the uh, Saskatoon Hilltop, so we're able to limit him to less than a first down, but only by about a yard and a half. Yeah, this is uh, second down. We'll call it a yard from the Okanagan Sun, 43-yard line. And they empty the backfield. Looks like they're passing here. Silverman dropping back. Quick pass up. That ball is knocked down. A big play there by the uh, ha Hilltop middle linebacker, Ryan David, number 43. Well, the Sun go with uh, six receivers, send everybody out everybody on the back but I think that on a second and short situation if you're gonna pass the ball uh, you might as well use play action there's no sense just emptying the backfield and going with six receivers uh, everybody thinks that you're gonna pass the ball anyway and what that allowed uh, Aaron David the or, sorry Aaron De Ryan David the uh, middle linebacker for Saskatoon to do was just get into his drop stick his hand up and knock that ball down well unfortunate for the Sun is they'll have to give the ball up once again facing third down and a yard to go I guess, uh, you know, knowing how Jay Christensen's called the game this year, I'm almost surprised they're not uh, attempting to go for it here, but uh, trailing by seven points, not wanting to give up such great field position to the Hilltops. They've opted to kick, and Adam Eckert is standing at about his own 27, 28-yard line as they uh, get set to uh, give the ball back to the Hilltops. And the long snap is there. Eckert puts it up. And this time it'll be taken by Andrew Ginther, number 73. He runs backwards, but looking for some room, and he's got it if he can f get outside. But finally, great cover there. That was uh, number 39, John Bloxham, pulling in to uh, run him out of room as uh, the Hilltops will now get set to take over. We'll take a break. It's 14-7 Hilltops. This is Sun Football on CKOV. Deck, or first and 10 for the Hilltops. Their scrimmage again. It's Weiss breaking it in the midfield area as he runs up the middle, and uh, that little counter play you talk about, Bill, uh, working once again. It certainly is, and I think Saskatoon's going to clue into this, and the Okanagan Sun coaching staff are going to have to make adjustments, but Saskatoon starts off to the right, pull their two offensive linemen back to the left, hand back off inside to Grenier, or sorry, Weiss in this example, and he is rumbling down the field before anybody has a chance to even lay a hand on him. Very quickly into Okanagan Sun territory, and the uh, Sun will definitely want to stop the Hilltops from scoring here, but they're going to have to stiffen now. It's first and 10 from the Sun, 53. Steve Beland calling out the signals. Taking a long snap, he is indeed back to pass this time. Puts it up, and it's going to be intercepted. It is indeed picked off by Ryan Folk. He's got lots of room to run down the sideline. Dragged down at the 30 to the 25. Huge play by Ryan Folk. Well, that was a great play by Ryan Folk and the fact that he made the catch after dropping to his pass coverage zone on the short side of the field. But a terrible throw by, by Beeland. There was a, a Saskatoon receiver curling around him behind Folk and one running out to the flats and he just threw it to neither one of them. He threw it to number 35 who was more than happy to take it back the other way. Yeah, that was one of those plays where he almost could have dropped the pass simply because he was so surprised that he looked like the intended receiver as it was right into his hands and you can see clearly Folk was the only one who was going to catch that ball. Here's a big chance for the Sun to tie this game before the half on the 28-yard line of the Hilltops. They've got five men in motion. Vander Hyde in the backfield. He'll take the ball looking for some room but he's got nowhere to go. Pushed backwards there. A big play by uh, the uh, Saskatoon Hilltop defender, that number 70, Pat Clark. Well, Pat Clark, the defensive end, is an All-Canadian, and he showed why on that one. He uh, got rid of his block, cut inside, took on Van de Heide and latched onto him and did not let him go. That's one of the few times Van de Heide hasn't been able to spin out of a one-on-one -on -one tackle. All right, well, listen, we've got one player down and uh, taking a knee. That's Stu Vanderheide, which uh, certainly is the last thing the Okanagan Sun needed this time is to lose one of their top players uh, to an injury. But uh, we have time. We'll take a break. It is... 14-7 Hilltops. You're listening to the 2000 Canadian Bowl on CKOV. To the Canada Bowl 2000 live on CKOV and televised on Shaw Cable. The Okanagan Sun after a turnover and a short gain. Now second down and eight. Matt Shirell down on the sidelines once again. Yeah, you guys want to hear something really strange. At least I think it's strange. For some reason, the league's uh, doping control officer is in attendance and two players from each team will be tested for drugs after the game. Yeah, well, that's interesting, but we know that that's obviously a specter in sports these days. Silverman putting it up, and uh, there is a throw, some contact, and the flags come in. Interference as uh, Sheeman, uh, Jeff Sheeman, number three, definitely had some contact there trying to pull away from the uh, secondary of the Hilltops. Well, Silverman dropped back and saw the blitz coming from the Saskatoon Hilltops and just lobbed it over the middle to Sheeman, who was running a pattern because the safety had, had, uh, had blitzed up. Uh, I didn't myself see any contact there, uh, but... <laughs> Luckily, having seen this replay that we have to us here, uh, number 21 for Saskatoon, Ryan Barnstable. Ryan Barnstable had a big mitt full of jersey in his back, so he did pull him to the ground. So I'll have to say that was a much better call than I thought it was originally. All right, well, there's a break for the Okanagan Sun. The clock shows 1.20 to go here in the second half. Sun trailing by seven, but threatening to tie this game up once again as they'll scrimmage first down and 10 from the Hilltop's 12-yard line. 
I'm just looking at the bench here, Grant, and I see uh, Van Hyde, the working on Van de Hyde. I think he might have broken his nose from that helmet-to-helmet -helmet, uh, contact. They're working on his nose. Yeah, well, they certainly could use him back as soon as possible. Karagadon blocks him now in the backfield, and that will certainly put a, hamper, a damper on the running game. It's up to Eckert in the end zone as he leaps up and has it for a touchdown. Great catch, Adam Eckert. Touchdown, Sun. Saskatoon came with the blitz. The Sun picked it up. They chopped everybody at the line of scrimmage, and he had one-on-one -on -one with Adam Eckert on the left-hand side, and Silverman just lobbed it up for him. The Saskatoon defender didn't even look, didn't even look back to see where the ball was. He was too busy scrambling to be, uh, to try and get back to Adam Eckert, and it was an easy catch. He just got forced out of bounds just as he caught the ball. Yeah, great effort to keep his feet in bounds. Uh, the coverage there by uh, Tyler Pokeyoe, and uh, as you called it, he didn't turn around, and Eckert was the only one who knew when that ball was coming, and he just uh, made a great athletic play there. And now the Sun pulled it within one point as the clock shows a minute 14 to go here in the second half. And uh, they get set to take this point after attempt. It is uh, Daryl Ashton doing the kicking, and it is through. We're tied 14 14. We'll take a break. You're listening to the Canadian Bowl 2000 on CKOV. Welcome back to the Apple Bowl. I'm Grant Scott along with Bill Long and Matt Shirell down in the sidelines. Yeah, good news. Stu Vanderheide is not seriously hurt. He said he's okay, but his helmet took a beating. They got the drill out there. Uh, his screwdrivers, the cage is all bent. They're working on his helmet, but he's okay. It is 14 14. We've got a dandy shaping up here today as we get close to the end of the first half. Adam Eckert puts this kick up, and it'll be a short one, eventually taken there by Garrett Oliver. And he's looking for some room, still running with the ball, and uh, they've had some great kick returns as well. Check that. That's uh, 23 Bill Baker running that back to the 40 for the Hilltops. An excellent return just up the middle, and uh, the Oklahoma son number 47, Jeff Smith, comes down there, and he is an absolute maniac on his coverage team. He actually hurdled one of the members of the of the uh, the wall that Saskatoon had set up, and just came flying in there, disrupted everything. Let's see if they can uh, maintain this in intensity for the remainder of the half. Well, it has uh, been a turnover that has uh, played a big part in this game so far, and uh, indeed even a non-turnover as uh, we look back to a fumble that was uh, blown dead early. 14-14 the score, a minute to go in the first half. First and 10, the Hilltops trying to put some points on the board before this half ends. Beeland putting it up. He's going deep, and he's got a man there, but he's also covered by Dax Olofsson. Broken up fine as uh, Andrew Ginther really had no chance at that pass. No. Olofsson had uh, good coverage, was back in his uh, deep coverage zone. None of the defenders of the Okanagan Sun are going to get beat deep at this point of the half. And uh, Ginther, while he has some speedy wheels, really wasn't able to be open. Uh, Bieland had made up his mind that he was going to throw deep to the right, and he did it anyway, even though there was really no coverage. Uh, sorry, he wasn't really open at all. All right, second down and 10 from the 40 of the Hilltop. Saskatoon is scrimmaging this score, tied 14-14, 1-0-1 to go here in the second half. A chance here for the Okanagan Sun to get the ball back and maybe put up some late points, but they need a big defensive play here. Back to pass, Beeland fakes the pass, hands it off. That is uh, Grinier with the ball, and he's going to be brought down short of a first down, a punting situation. The Sun will get the ball back before the half ends. Almost a draw situation where uh, Beeland pump fake like he was going to go downfield and then hand it off to Grenier, who got him behind one of his big offensive linemen, but the Sun did a good job. Kyler Jukes, number 63, did a great job there of stuffing that one, and then Truscott, number 9, slid off from his defensive end and made the made the tackle on that and shut him down for a gain of only about five. Well, still uh, no Stu Vanderheide back on the field just yet. As you heard Matt Charell tell us, uh, they are fixing his helmet after a huge collision between him and the uh, defensive end of the uh, Saskatoon Hilltops, number 70, Pat Clark. The Sun will go with 11 men on the line of scrimmage because it gives them more options with respect to the return or a potential block. And I would not be surprised to see them really go after this one because Kerr hasn't had a great day of punting the ball. All right, so with the clock running down to about 40 seconds, uh, no reason not to go forward at this point. Kerr calling a long snap. He finally takes it. A decent pressure by the Sun, but they will not block it. Adam Eckert is deep to take this kick at his own 25. And he looks for some room. Heads up the middle. He's across the 35. Heading outside. Finally brought down from behind by a number of Hilltop players. But the Sun will scrimmage from their 40. We'll take one more break. It's 14-14. This is Canada Bowl 2000 live on CKOV. Okanagan Sun 14. Saskatoon Hilltops 14. 22 seconds to go. And uh, the uh, Okanagan Sun have just had to take a timeout. John Bloxham did not get on the field. Uh, that, of course, again, due to the uh, repair job they're doing on Stu Vanderheide's helmet. And now I see down on the sidelines, his helmet is back on his head, but they're not opting to bring him in. But the Sun did have to take a timeout. I'm a little surprised they didn't call a timeout uh, before the punt to keep some time on the clock. Because they allowed a good 20, 25 seconds to tick off uh, before they get the ball back. Yes, it is. A, you know, when you only have two timeouts, you do have to be a little careful how you use them. But uh, they could have saved themselves about 15, 20 seconds, yes. So with 22 seconds to go, it'll be interesting to see what strategy Jay Christensen has in mind. He's certainly a gambler, 
uh, not known for playing conservative football. Will they try to put some more points up before the half ends? Out of the shotgun, it certainly looks like they're going for it as Silverman drops back to pass. He's got some time with a four-man rush coming, but steps up. Lots of room in the middle. He'll uh, get close to the 50-yard line before being brought down close to a first down. They just opened up like Moses in the Red Sea on that one. Silverman stepped back. Uh, Saskatoon is in a, a prevent defense. Or just everybody flooding back deep. They're going to give you the short stuff because the Sun really do have to get about another 20 to 25 yards to have a legitimate field goal opportunity here. Yeah, certainly from that field position as uh, we see Silverman uh, running that ball up the middle. He had lots of room, but the Hilltop's not going to panic about that kind of gain. You can take 10 yards up the middle. As you mentioned, when you need a lot more yardage to get into scoring range, they just don't want to get burned deep. Yeah, make them earn their yards. Don't, don't give them anything. And with 14 seconds left, the Sun have perhaps uh, two plays. They have two plays left, so they, they really have to save themselves uh, three or four seconds so they can get a field goal opportunity so I would have to have to think that the Sun are either going to run uh, something deep to Eckert on the outsides or coming across the middle and use their last time out it is 14 14 with 14 seconds on the clock as the Okanagan Sun are scrimmaging second down and about a yard to go here be interesting to see if they opt to stay on the ground or uh, actually put it up deep as you mentioned it would give Saskatoon one more chance to get the ball back but uh, only really on the punt return Looks like they're definitely looking to pass as Silverman is in the shotgun. Not flooding the zone, though, now. The uh, slots finally get into motion, come up to the line. He's sending four deep, looking for some blocking. He's got Eckerd wide open on the 50-yard line. It's a catch, and Eckerd now is going to Oh! What a hit by Pat Clark. He just creamed Adam Eckerd. That's about as hard a hit as I've ever seen anybody taking a football game. As Eckerd caught the pass, he took a curl pattern from his left-hand side, and, and Eckerd doesn't know where he is. He's... He's shaking his head, but he cut a curl pattern, stopped, tried to head back out, and Clark came flying back and absolutely hammered him. That uh, You got that right. That was probably the hardest hit we've seen all year, and we've seen a few tannies. I don't think he's going to be wanting to go back to Eckert on this play. He puts it up. He's got Sheeman there. That ball incomplete, and that will do it. The first half is over. The score, the Okanagan Sun 14, the Saskatoon Hilltops 14, and we'll put this kick up as it is going to be a short one. Taken there finally by number 19, Morley Miller, and he's met immediately by a number of Sun cover players and uh, they'll keep them pinned relatively deep in their own zone about the 33 yard line will be where the hilltop scrimmage well Adam Eckert uh, gets a lot of height on his kickoffs but he's not particularly deep so I'm quite surprised that Saskatoon is as far back as they are they could move up another 10 yards and, and still have their quality return guys getting their hands on the ball well Adam Eckert who took that incredible pound if you will from Pat Clark one of the toughest hits I've ever seen I uh, gotta wonder how he's gonna shake off the effects of that hit but uh, we don't have to worry about that just yet because it's a hilltop offense on the field right now Steve Beelan under the center first down and 10 at about the 32 yard line again looking to hand that ball off and he does and it is met there in the middle by a number of Okanagan Sun defenders nowhere to go up the gut there tried a bit of a misdirection with the, the first handoff to Grenier and then Cox the slot back coming around and, and fake to him but it was, once again, that straight-ahead blocking, and the Sun defenders are sliding off the offensive line of Saskatoon and making the stop at the line of scrimmage. I would guess the Hilltops have probably been able to use that effectively this season, but uh, so far against the Sun, the uh, straight-ahead blocking really hasn't been the key. You see, statistically, the Hilltops uh, dominating with 12 first downs to four, and in total offense, uh, holding an edge there as well. But the score tied, and that's where it counts the most. Beeline back to pass. It is caught there again by Ginther, who is, uh, well, with second effort, may well have the first down. Very close to it, but the Sun again pushing him back. It's uh, going to be scrimmaging close to the 40-yard line, and who knows, maybe the Hilltops will be gambling. Well, a little curl pattern by Ginther on, on the right-hand side. Beeline throws over top. And he hits a bit, but Ginther started dancing around a little too much rather than just head up the field and get the first down. He's trying to, to move around and make something happen, but uh, there's just too many Okanagan Sun defenders there with Sheeman and Cole and Littlewood getting there to make the tackle. All right, back down to the sidelines of Maturell. Yeah, third down looks like more like almost two yards, and uh, they are going to punt the ball away. Had a chance to talk to Coach Lawrence Nagy. He says, we got to stop the run. So he's well aware of what his team needs to do to get or to win this this game as we're tied up at 14. All right, Jody Kerr will uh, take the long count, trying to draw the sun offside. Finally, the snap comes, and the kick is up. It is Stu Vanderheide back in the game, back to take this kick. He's got it at the 40, and uh, he's got some room there as he comes to the 50-yard line, still looking to pick his way through. Finally dragged down around midfield. We'll take our first break in this half. It's 14-14. You're listening to live coverage of the 2000 Canadian Bowl on CKOB. And we are underway. Zach Silverman has just hit Jeff Sheeman, who's now in open field. He's got a chance to score. He's to the 20, the 10. He's going to go in, and the Sun take the lead. Touchdown, Okanagan. Well, the Sun open up with a play-action pass. Silverman did a great job on the play fake. And then look down the middle, what they love. Jeff Sheeman to do is get everything that he needs to play. Pass, passing 
run play. Yeah, that was uh, absolutely perfectly executed. I look back at the stick, and uh, we'll call. We have to call it about 48, 49 yards there. As I see the, unless they move the first down marker, uh, that looked like where they were scrimmaging from. But I think it was it was close to that. But what a great effort there! As you see, Sheeman just run untouched, finally into the end zone. He had plenty of blocking, and the Okanagan Sun have the first lead of the game for them. It's 20 to seven or 14, and the kick is through and good. We'll make it 21-14. The Okanagan Sun with their first lead of the game. And from the department of how big is that, Bill Long, the uh, Sun now with the lead, and we've said they're a second-half team. We'll see how the Hilltops respond to the pressure of trailing in the playoffs for the first time all season. Well, I think if people want to see how good the Saskatoon Hilltops are, well, you can see right on this next series. Uh, I think the coaching staff is not going to get flustered. They're not going to panic. There's lots of time left. They're going to come out, and they're going to continue with their game plan. They're going to slowly and methodically work it down the field. If they start to panic at this point, then I think that they're in a lot of trouble, but they have to maintain their composure and conversely, the Okanagan Sun, their defense has to come out fired up and stop. If they, if they can get Saskatoon to go one, two and out, or maybe get only one first down and then have to, have to punt the ball, uh, you're going to see a huge momentum shift, which is traditionally what the Okanagan Sun do year after year after year. They wait and they wait and they wait for the big play, the big momentum shift, and this is what's going to happen right now on this next series. Well, certainly a change in the sidelines of the Saskatoon Hilltops, who look so confident. This kick now taken there by number 34. That's Weiss. He'll be looking for a big return. He's got some blocking and some room as he breaks up through to 40, across the 45, and finally slowed down there, but still running hard as he gets very close to Okanagan Sun territory. The toppers will scrimmage from the 48. Well, neither one of these two teams got here by laying down, and you could see on this return that the determination that Saskatoon had to get the ball back in decent field position and you can see on the coverage that the Sun had uh, we are in for one heck of a second half here just by looking at the uh the, the sheer uh, intensity that's on that field right now. Yeah, I think it's safe to say uh, scoring is anything but done in this contest. Lots of time left to play. First down 10, Steve Beeland now scrimmaging from his own 48-yard line. Their second possession of this second half. Beeland hands it off to Gunther. He's got it there, but dragged down immediately. Ryan Sheeman hauls him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain for the toppers. The little counter play of the trap, and for the first time, Ryan Sheeman was able to slide in behind his blocks from his middle linebacker position and make a tackle virtually at the line of scrimmage, just about a yard gain. He has to become more involved in the run defense for the Okanagan Sun in order for them to, sh to stop the Saskatoon Hilltops, who had 145 yards rushing in the first half. All right, it's now second down. We'll call it 11 as the Hilltops now playing from behind for the first time in the playoffs this year. We'll see how they respond. Belan with the ball. He drops back to pass. Looking to his left side, he puts it up. Has a man open, and it is going to be a first down catch by Andrew Ford. And they're into Sun territory at the 50-yard line. A three receiver set to the short side of the field for Saskatoon. The wide receiver, Ginther, just ran about a 15 yard out pattern. Beeland put the ball on the money to a spot on the sidelines. It's pretty difficult to defend that play because you, the quarterback is actually throwing to a spot. He's not really throwing to a, any particular player. Well, Beeland uh, certainly looked good there, but he had uh, some shaky moments throwing the ball in the first half. One that led to a turnover, which uh, tied the game up. But now the Hilltops looking to tie the game up in their own right, trailing by seven inside Sun Territory at the 48. It's first and 10. Steve Beeland, there was some early movement there. No flags. Looks like everybody got back. Weiss with the ball. He's met there at about the 45, maybe a gain of four or five yards. The ball came loose, but it was whistled dead. And boy, Jared Hoover had the ball and nobody in front of him. But that play clearly was down this time. Uh, a simple a simple running play to the left to the short side of the field out of a one back set uh, they managed to seal off the defensive end but the uh, Okanagan Sun uh, Ryan Folk came up forced it outside and Corey Weiss made the tackle second down we'll call it six yards to go from the Okanagan Sun 39 yard make that the 44 yard line pardon me clock now showing 10 34 to go here in the second quarter it's 21 14 Sun Steve Beeland once again under the ball. His uh, backs are in motion. They both go to the right side. He drops back to pass again. He's got a man wide open there. Completely uncovered was their slot, Drew Cox. But he's, uh, uh, well, very close. Looks like indeed he has made another first down as the Hilltops continue to drive. Yes, the Hilltops are having a lot of success running patterns underneath uh, the two clearing patterns as they send the wide out and the player just inside of him deep. Cox slides out from his inside receiver position and uh, really the linebacker responsible for that coverage can't get there in time and you have a bit of a mismatch uh, in the smaller receiver against the bigger linebacker uh, they could have a lot of success with that play it's going to force the Oakland Sun to change their coverages in a three uh, three receiver set so it'll bring up first down 10 from the 37 yard line of the Sun the Hilltops looking very impressive once again with this drive 
Steve Bieland calling out the signals. This time he sends Weiss to the left side. Drops back to pass. And again, he's got Cox wide open. Didn't look for him, though, this time. And that pass is caught there by number 71, Eric Gartner. And he's finally dragged down about the 15-yard line. Both the slots were wide open on that play. Well, that's a play that obviously the coaching staff upstairs saw. Bieland rolls the half rolls out to his left and is looking left all the way and Gardner from the right hand side from the back side of the play sneaks in behind the linebackers and Beeland knew he was going to throw there and he looked looked to his left and then threw back to his right who was Gunther, Gar or, sorry Gardner was wide open back there that's an excellent play and that's the kind of play that the coaching staff spots from upstairs well we talked about how good the uh, team the Okanagan Sun are at making uh adjustments at halftime obviously the hilltops have done a few of their own as well first down 10 from the sun 15 steve beeland this time he pitches it out that's grenier with the ball and he's got lots of room to run finally tied up by ryan Sheeman, but not before chewing up another 10 yards there's their quick toss play where they put it uh, put it wide the wide side of the field off to the left push the guards out grenier cuts it back inside that is such a difficult play to defend because you have to be able to force him inside and what you know defensively you want to force him inside but Saskatoon is doing a great job by sealing off the pursuit, sealing off Ryan Sheeman, who's getting caught up in traffic, sealing off Ryan Folk, who can't make the tackle. And there's a short gain up the middle there, but that'll be enough to get a first down for the Hilltops and first and goal. And as we talked about, boy, they get inside the five with that big offensive line. Very hard for anybody to stop them from going into the end zone. Well, they're just firing up the diesels right now. They've got the big V8s all in the front line there, and it's going to be very difficult for the Sun to, st to stuff them here. They're going to have to... Uh, uh, shoot the gaps hard come up in what they call a 60 pinch we got six defensive linemen all jammed in between the five offensive linemen and see if they can stuff it up but uh it's it's almost uh, i think uh, with this offensive line not a matter of if but when yeah you got that right with a two, a two and a half yards to go they also bring in their defensive end pat clark to aid in the blocking they have got some big guys up front as they scrimmage first down and goal beeland with his uh, standard weiss and grenier in the backfield he gives it to weiss and he will score easy here touchdown hilltops well there you go with the three three set backfield and with the whole defense all keyed up inside between the tackles you are susceptible to the running back being able to bounce it outside and Saskatoon got a good job on blocking on the right hand side of the line of scrimmage where they put number 52 Brian Gubert in there as a fullback they hooked the defender to the Okanagan Sun and then Grenier was allowed to really walk in from from uh, from about three yards out very difficult play to defend well certainly any questions about the Hilltops resolved to stay in this game were answered on that drive as they march smartly down the field to tie this game up uh, pending the outcome of the point after attempt by Jody Kerr. It's 21-20 right now. Snap a little high, but pinned down. It's up and good. And we are tied once again, and we'll take a break. The score, the Sun 21, Hilltops 21. You're listening to Canada Bowl 2000 on CKOV. Back to the Apple Bowl, where the Saskatoon Hilltops have just tied this contest. 21-21 with a very impressive drive. They'll kick off to the Okanagan Sun, and this seesaw battle is continuing here in the second half. Well, you're seeing a real... Uh different two different styles of offense slow ball control move the ball down the field and big play and it's going to be uh, to see who's going to win this battle well we'll see uh, what kind of kick we get here again a short one again to the sidelines Nagy's under it but will he let it go no he'll catch it at the 30 he slips and uh, continues to run up the sideline finally knocked out of bound after picking up maybe another seven eight yards after that they'll scrimmage from the 40 and uh, we'll take a break it is no, actually check that we won't take a break my apologies <laughs> i'm getting a little carried away with it <laughs> uh, getting out of here. Right. We will continue on. First down and 10, the Okanagan Sun will be scrimmaging from their own 39-yard line. And I'll tell you, that's the great thing about championship games, Bill Long, is uh, the game and time starts to wind down. Every play just becomes so important. Well, there's no, uh, there's no one big play in this game. There's about 30 big plays in this game. First down, 10. Zach Silverman underneath the center. He sends everybody in motion once again. Dropping back to pass, looking for the quick strike. He's got Sheeman once again for a gain of about five as they pick up uh, a nice first down gain on that play. Send all the running backs out of the backfield. Three receivers off the left. They all run down the field except for Sheeman, who stopped at around five yards. It's a very quick hitting play designed to catch a defense backing off. And it's a good play to run on first down because now it gets them into a perfect position, second and three. It is indeed second and three as the Okanagan Sun look to uh, continue this drive. And uh, we saw how Saskatoon responded to a scoring drive from the Okanagan. Now the Sun, of course, wanting to uh, respond in kind. Second down and three. Silverman again emptying the backfield. No doubt here the pass is coming. He's got Vanderheide for a first down into Hilltop territory. Now that's a great play. That's a great read by Silverman and Vanderheide. It's called a hot. Vanderheide came out of the running back position off to the left side, or sorry, the right side of the offensive line. And as the ball was snapped, the linebacker came. Silverman saw the linebacker blitzing. Vanderheide saw the linebacker blitz and he just dumped it over the line of scrimmage. 
10 yard gain very yeah. nice play excellent play as the sun moving to hilltop territory scrimmaging from the uh, saskatoon 52 yard line out of the shotgun zach silverman has six receivers uh, to throw to once again he's got eckert open will throw to him he's got a catch there at about the 45 yard line as adam eckert faces his first test since that big hit at the end of this first half coming across the middle from his wide receiver spot on the left side of the field the the sun have gone to a six receiver set Saskatoon is counteracting with no middle linebacker. They're spreading everybody out wide and it's leaving the, the uh, it middle of the field wide open so you can look to the sun and start throwing more crossing patterns as the rest of this half continues. All right, it is now second down and uh, we'll call it three once again. Uh, scrimmaging from the Hilltop's 46-yard line. Zach Silverman underneath the center again. They empty the backfield. They stick to the ground. Big pressure on there, but he completes the pass to Sheeman for a first down and more as Sheeman runs across to the 35-yard line. They're going to stick with what the with what's working for them in this half. It's the same play they've run the last couple of times. Saskatoon is playing way off. Saskatoon is not going to change their defense. They're not going to allow themselves to be beat deep. Now on that play, Silverman got some real heat from Clark, the defensive end, who got in his face. And uh, after, after the play, Clark smacked him and drove him to the ground. Uh, they can't allow Silverman to take those kind of hits. It is first down 10 for the Okanagan Sun. Scrimmaging from the Hilltop's 36-yard line. This time it's just Karagata in the backfield, and he finally moves as they continue to drain the backfield and send six receivers up. Blindside pressure coming, but Silverman gets it off. Looking for Aaron David. It's caught there at the 15-yard line. Another first down as the Sun keep moving the ball. Send the more receivers out. We've got a real shooting match going on here right now. Silverman threw a beautiful pass deep to the right. Aaron David running on out about 15, 16 yards down the field impossible to defend the defenders uh, in behind Aaron David make the catch force the defender to make the tackle which he did first down 16 yard line all right so the sun now deep in hilltop territory threatening to take the lead once again 615 to go here in the third quarter out of the shotgun Zach Silverman as they continue to flood the defensive secondary with receivers they're simply out manning him and it's working so far pressure there though and Silverman will not get away from this rush Poor blocking on that uh, as three Hilltop uh, defenders managed to get through and stuff Silverman deep in his own field. Bremicom, the defensive end, made a great play coming around the offensive tackle, Eric Allum, who's, who's done a pretty good job handling Bremicom in the last two quarters. But uh, uh, in this case, uh, Silverman just couldn't get away from him. He was looking downfield. He had some open receivers, but he just didn't have the time to get him the ball. Yeah, it looked like Allum was beat right from the get-go on that play as uh, Brimacombe got position on the outside, and uh, that broke that play up immediately. So a sudden quick turnaround is now the uh, Sun very close to being out of field goal range. They'll scrimmage second down. We'll call it 23 yards to go out of the shotgun. Silverman once again. He'll definitely need some time to pass this time. A four-man rush coming from the Hilltops. They double-team Brimacombe. Get that ball up. Very nearly intercepted. And that was almost a dangerous play there, but the Sun now face a decision time. Likely going to go for three points here, but we'll see what happens. Well, that sack did an the, the sack on the previous play did an interesting thing. Forced the Okanagan Sun to keep the running backs in for extra blocking, which means they had less receivers out in their patterns, which means the linebackers had nobody to cover. And Ryan, uh, Ryan, Ryan David, the middle linebacker, he just slid over, and he should have made that interception, but he was thinking, thinking too much. He should have just uh, stepped out and caught it. All right, so with 5.18 to go, it looks like about a 35-yard field goal, certainly within the range of Adam Eckert. Although, again, uh, we are certainly uh, pondering a lot up here how the effects of that hit will uh, continue to uh, bother him throughout the game, but so far so good after a huge hit to end the first half. And uh, this will be a 35-yard attempt. Zach Silverman is to hold the ball. Long count, snap comes down, it is up, and the kick is uh, definitely going to be wide to the right, so nothing there for the uh, Okanagan Sun, but the ball actually dropped by the uh, return man. That is uh, number 21, Ryan Barnstable, but in one of the rules I don't like about the junior football, it's irrelevant because the play will come out to the 20, and uh, you don't get the single point on the missed field goal. Oh, no, you do get the single point. Yeah, you get the single point. Good stuff. But uh, what that, what that allows, by uh, mishandling that kick, uh, he did have the opportunity to only get it out to the one yard line and then you would get the ball to the, to the, to the 20. 20. So he did have an opportunity to run it out and he did have to give up a point and let's just face it, one point is going to make all the difference today. He's got to feel him. Back down to the sideline, Matt Jarrell. Yeah, you know, Zach Silverman last night at the Canadian Banquet, he was uh, named the uh, most outstanding player in Canada, most offens offensive player. And the guy just almost threw an interception. He runs off the field laughing. He's just got the greatest character in the world. He's laughing and joking with his receivers as he runs off the field. First down 10 from the 35. Belan hands it off to Weiss. He's got some pressure there, but finally some room after a gain of about four. He's dragged down there by the uh, de uh, defensive line of the Okanagan Sun. Ryan Folk in on that tackle. The, in the inside trap play again. Uh, 
Brian Sheeman did a much better job of reading it from his middle linebacker position, stepping up. Kyler Jukes made a good made a good job forcing Saskatoon to run the ball back inside. They are managing to weave their way through there, but here you are. Second and four, second and six. That's a, a difficult spot for the Okanagan Sun defense to be in right now. 4.04 to go here in the third quarter. The Hilltops, second down and six on their own 39. Key play here for the Sun defense, who've strung seven men along the secondary line. And Beeline back to pass under a bit of pressure, but he steps away from it. Got an open man there. It is caught, but it'll be short of a first down. It looks like the Sun may get the ball back. It'll be very close. We'll see if uh, it's close enough for the Hilltops to consider a gamble. Well, Beeline got forced out of the pocket on that one and just rolled around to his right-hand side. I thought he had room to run it. He hasn't taken off uh, really and run the ball at all today, even though I know he can. Uh, and he threw to receiver. And this is not the first time that a Saskatoon receiver on a key second down play has been a yard and a half, two yards short. You've got to know where your first down marker is in your play, and you've got to run your pattern. It doesn't matter if the coach says, well, you know, it's a six-yard pattern or a five-yard pattern. Well, it's a first down pattern on second down. You've got to get the yardage, and they aren't getting the yardage on their second down uh, pass patterns. Well, it's uh, third down, about a yard and a half for the Hilltops being on their own side of the field. They are setting up to kick anyway, uh, opting perhaps not to take a chance on a gamble here and giving the Sun great field position. Jody Kerr is back to take this snap. Of course, Sun ready for any kind of trickery. Will we see it? There's been nothing yet so far. Indeed, that kick is up. Very, very short kick. Flag comes in, too. Vanderheide has it at the 40 and drops it. He'll turn around and run, but met there immediately by three or four members of the uh, hill, uh, Hilltops. But we have to see what this penalty is. Falling in the secondary of the Okanagan Sun, boy, it would be a terrible time for a defensive penalty. From that position of the field, you're just wondering if they have too many men on the field or a defensive holding penalty, in which case uh, that's going to give Saskatoon a, uh, a first down. And indeed, it does look like that is the case. And a terrible special teams play there is the Sun with a chance to get the ball back, take a penalty, and they are going to give the ball back to the Hilltops. A costly error there. Still waiting to see what the call is. The officials are discussing it, but uh, judging from the reaction of both teams, it looks like it's going to be Saskatoon ball. And uh, they're also going to add a few yards. And now they're marching it back to where Vanderheide was brought down. So some confusion here? Well, it depends on uh, when the foul occurred. If the foul occurred after the kick, then it goes against the Okanagan Sun on the, against their offense. They'll move the ball back from the spot of where the, the play ended. If it had occurred before, then it would be a first down for uh, Saskatoon. Well, there's been, um, I guess, some interesting calls made by the officiating crew here. They, they've been very relatively quiet in this contest, but uh, really, it, it, we had a long time getting that uh, play signaled into us, so a little bit of confusion on our part as to what was exactly going to happen there. But uh, the Okanagan Sun have the ball in a one-point lead here with 2.44 to go in the third quarter. They're in their own territory, scrimmaging from the 29-yard line and looking to establish a drive and get some more points on the board. I don't think a one-point lead is going to hold up with this much time left on the clock. Silverman back to pass again. Six men out, but he's got some time to throw. And uh, there is Aaron David, who was uh, the intended receiver, but that pass really had no chance. Well, the Sun are starting to take advantage of the, the linebacking core for Saskatoon, who aren't getting into very deep drops, and they're hitting the seams. Uh, Jeff Sheeman was open early, and Silverman uh, decided not to throw to him as Sheeman was going straight down the middle of the field. And the second receiver was open as well, but it was just a bit low. The ball was just a bit, little bit low. I can see Okanagan starting to take advantage of more passes over the middle. Second down and 10 for the Okanagan Sun as they again empty the backfield. Six men to throw to Zach Silverman out of the shotgun. Standing at about his own 23, 22 yard line. Snap comes back, and again, he's got some time to throw. He'll put it up, looking for uh, Heron, who's hammered on that play. Could not hang on. The Hilltops will get the ball back. Well, Neil Sendecki saw that play come, and his Heron was running a seam pattern down the right-hand side on the wide side of the field. And Sendecki had the opportunity to perhaps go up and get that ball, but he chose to go for the hit. And uh, he lay licking on Heron. But uh, Silverman wants to hit the deep, as I, I said just before. They're looking for the inside guys coming over the middle, and uh, Saskatoon is starting to make some bit of a changes in their defensive coverage. They're dropping some linebackers out a little bit earlier to take away the short little hits. Yeah, they actually had uh, three men right around Rob Heron as that pass finally came in, so it looks like maybe they're paying now a little more attention to that middle. And it worked, as they're going to get the ball back to take this punt for the Hilltops. It's Andrew Ford, Andrew Ginther. Adam Eckert will be doing the punting as uh, Ginther and Ford stand about their own 45, 50 yard line. Long count here from Adam Eckert. And the snap forces him to move a little bit, but he's got plenty of time to get this kick off. Does get a nice one off. That'll be taken there by it. Dropped by Andrew Ford. And he's met there immediately and pushed back. A big play by the special teams. We'll take a break. It's Okanagan 22. The Hilltops 21. You're listening to the 2000 Canada Bowl on CKOB. 14 to go. Once again, Weiss with the ball and a big first down gain as he runs to his right side close to the 50-yard line of the Hilltops. 
That's their bread and butter play so far today. The quick toss, toss the right to the short side of the field. He cuts it up inside the offensive tackle, who's pushing the defensive end out, and he gets himself a nice gain. Now Saskatoon's in a difficult in, in the, in the driver's seat on this play. Second and three. This allows them to go to either a run play or to play action pass. Well, they've certainly used Travis Weiss, their running back, effectively in the game so far today as uh, he's run for big yardage. Second down and three, as you mentioned, from the 49. The Hilltop scrimmaging. Steve Beeland calling out signals. In a long count on this one. He'll pitch it to Weiss on the right side. He's got some room through the middle, and he breaks a tackle or two, getting, looking for open field. Finally dragged down and fumbles the ball, but uh, no one from the hill or the Sun around, but another first down for the Hilltops. Same play, and it looked almost as if the Okanagan Sun knew that that play was coming, but they simply couldn't defend it. The, uh, the Saskatoon executed that play very, very well, and Weiss, who is uh, having a great game, and so is Grenier. They are very balanced in giving the ball to both players, but... Weiss cuts it back into the middle and almost breaks it free, but uh, the last Okanagan Sun defender, I'm not sure who exactly who it was, managed to trip him up. So first down 10, the Hilltops into Sun territory now, scrimmaging from the Okanagan 48-yard line. Once again, Beeland calling out signals. He's got four men in the backfield. He uh, does a bit of an odd handoff there that uh, fools no one, and uh, Weiss is met for no gain. Yeah, that's a, a fake toss, and it's a counter to the slot back coming inside. It's a play they've used a couple of times earlier in the game, had some success with but the Sun are getting much better penetration on the inside from McKenzie and Jukes and uh, stuffed that play up before it had a chance. All right, that is the end of the third quarter, and we'll take another break. The score, Okanagan 22, Hilltops 21. You'll listen to Sun Football on CK. Over back at the Apple Bowl, Grant Scott, Bill Long, and on the sidelines, Matt Shirell. And I'm with Jay Christensen, the offense coordinator for the Okanagan Sun. Jay, you guys are up by 1.22-21, 15 minutes ago. Well, it's fourth quarter, and uh, the Okanagan Sun believe that the fourth quarter is our quarter, so we're going to score a lot more points this quarter. It appears to me you guys are having a lot of trouble stopping their running game. Yeah, you know, I just try not to concern myself too much with the defense. we got our own adjustments to make. But and a big sack big, there big by the Okanagan Sun. Up and Number 45 bursting in there for the Sun. Darcy Littlewood, a big sack and a chance for the uh, Sun to get the ball back now. Well, he's on your side. Yeah, you know, it's something that we've been battling all year, and uh, they just got to, you know, we got one quarter to go, got their, game, their heads in the game. Okay, Jay, good luck. Thank you. Jay Christensen, the offensive coordinator for the Okanagan Sun. Back to you guys upstairs. All right, thanks a lot for that, Matt. And we have uh, an Okanagan Sun member down on the field right now. Can't make out who that number is, uh, but heard on that play. Boy, great penetration there by the uh, defensive line as uh, Beeland had no chance to get that pass off. Well, he stepped up into the pocket. Uh, the Sun had good pressure, but for one of the very few times today, the Sun uh, blitzed and brought Darcy Littlewood, who came in untouched. Uh, Saskatoon offensive lineman tried to pick him up at the very last minute, but couldn't, and uh, Beeland just walked right into that tackle. and. And uh, that's a, a good sign because the Sun need to start getting some pressure on Saskatoon when they have to throw the ball. All right, the injured Okanagan Sun was Kyler Jukes, number 63, but he's off under his own steam. And certainly the uh, team can breathe a sigh of relief there. The Okanagan Sun certainly banged up as the year went through. But uh, as Lawrence Nagy told me pregame, the team generally pretty healthy. And at this time of year, uh, probably about as healthy as the team could expect to be. And uh, managing to get most of their key players into this game. But you don't want to lose anyone at this stage. So... It is uh, Jody Kerr back to punt. He's standing at about his 40-yard line. He takes the snap and has time, gets it off. It is to Vanderheide back. Great kick there as he'll chase Vanderheide back to the 25, but he'll take it on the fly and still on his feet, looking for more room as he crosses the 35, finally met there by Pat Clark. I'll tell you, if there's one guy who doesn't lose a tackle, it's number 70, Pat Clark of the Hilltops. He has made all sorts of tackles today, made all sorts, and Vanderheide has proven once again that the first guy is not going to tackle him. All right, back down to Matt Shirell. Yeah, Jay Christensen just gathered the entire offense on the side of the field there, right by the bench, by the water coolers, and said, guys, 15 minutes left. When we get down there, we got to punch it in. We punch it in, we're going to win this ball game. And they all gave a big cheer and ran out in the field. All right, 13.46 to go in the fourth quarter, a one-point lead for the Okanagan Sun. They scrimmage first and 10 from their own 35. And as you just heard Matt mention, obviously looking to get some points on the board here and uh, lengthen that lead. Silverman under center. Haven't seen this much. And indeed, a, a running play. And that catches him off guard. Vanderheide into open field. He's got some room as he hits to the 50-yard line. Close to midfield. A huge gain there by Vanderheide. Well, a very simple fundamental play by the Okanagan Sun. Just a straight lead or power play to the left side of the line. Screamers the open side. And I don't know uh, what Saskatoon was doing on that, but it opened up and Vanda Hyde was eight yards into the secondary before anybody even touched him. I think it's just a case of they haven't seen a running play since about the first quarter, and I think they were caught absolutely flat-footed. That was, or flat-footed, pardon me, but that was a well-timed call by Jay Christensen. It's certainly a play that worked good as they're now close to midfield. The Okanagan Sun scrimmaging first down and 10. Long time in this huddle. And now they come up quickly to the line of scrimmage. 
Zach Silverman again out of the eye formation. He drops back, fakes the handoff, now looking to pass, is under a bit of pressure, putting it up for Adam Eckert, who's got some space, and a catch! Finally fumbles the ball, will they rule that a catch? It looks like they have, and it'll be another Okanagan Sun first down. Well, Saskatoon brought their safety up on a safety blitz, brought lots of heat. The Sun were rolling out away from the from the blitz, so Silverman had lots of time, and it put, what it does is it puts the receiver in a one-on-one -on -one position with the, uh, with the quarterback, and that is a mismatch. Adam Eckert up against number 36, Tyler Pocayoli, is, uh, is a bit of a mismatch. Adam's uh, got too much speed for him out there. And so the Sun scrimmaging now inside Hilltop territory at about the 38-yard line. It's first down and 10, and they stay in that I formation. Zach Silverman calling out the signals, and again, he'll hand it off to Vanderhyde with a bit of room up the middle. He'll gain good five, six yards and continues to bull forward there. Straight ahead football, straight ahead lead play off the left-hand side. It's a great play, and then it puts the Sun in a second and five, second and six position. They need to get better yards on first down than they had in the first half. And that's certainly been the case so far here in the second half as they've managed to establish a few drives against the Hilltops, and, or uh, although they've only come up with eight points so far, a touchdown and a missed field goal. They've certainly looked better in this half than they did in the first half, moving the ball. A crowd starting to get into this game as well, and that's something we've been waiting for. Players actually asking them to be quiet as Silverman calls out the signals. He drops back and has got some room. Great uh, change of direction there, but he's got no one to throw to, and now he's in a bit of pressure. He'll have to run for it, and bulls his head forward for another first down. A great play there as he uh, misdirected them, Bill, but uh, had no one to throw to. Well, it's the first time they've run the bootleg all day, and the only reason they run the bootleg is because the previous two plays they had success running the ball. It's a fake run, Silverman bootleg around his left. Brimacombe, the defensive end, got sucked, got taken in completely on that play and was lost his contained. Silverman went around him and had lots of room. Didn't really have anybody open to throw to, so he did the smart thing. Put his head down and got the first down. Yeah, great work there by the leader of this offense, Zach Silverman, who's now out of the shotgun, and they now send six men out to catch this ball as there's some heavy pressure coming. A shovel pass to Vanderheide. He's going to have to move. He breaks some tackles. He's got some blocking in front of him. Finally running to the 10. He's going to bowl through to the close to the three-yard line. The Sun are threatening. The inside shovel pass to Vanderheide, one of their favorite plays as Saskatoon came flooding in on a blitz. A perfect call for that defense. And Vanderheide, as he turns the corner, running around to his left, is pointing down, pointing out for his blockers, and almost takes it in. So it's first down and goal. The Okanagan Sun from the Hilltops three-yard line as they look to expand their lead. Currently up 22-21. The clock showing 11-17 to go in what has been another thrilling contest for the Okanagan Sun. Great run there by Stu Vanderheide. And once he gets a bit of room and can get those legs moving, he is so hard to bring down, and he showed it there. Zach Silverman up to the line of scrimmage. They're in the I formation. Blocks him the lead back. Stu Vanderheide behind him. Out of the eye formation, they uh, do the pitch out to Vanderheide. He's got some room and could score, and he's in. Touchdown, Sun! They run the option play, which is a great call down on the goal line because it puts the defenders in a no-win situation. They had to respect Silverman with the ball, so they bit in, stopped Zach, but he spit it out to Vanderheide on the right-hand side. Who well, he almost walked in, but he died for the goal line. He could have gone in standing up. Big, big drive by the offense of the Okanagan Sun. Boy, oh boy, was that ever key. And as we heard Matt Charell say just prior to the start of this drive, Jay Christensen saying go out and score and we can win this game. There's certainly a lot of football left. This uh, result far from determined. But what a great contest so far. The Sun up 28-21. The point after here to make it 29. Kick is down. It is good. And it's 29-21. We'll take a break. The Sun lead the Canada Bowl 2000. More in a moment on CKO. Back to Canada Bowl 2000 live from the Apple Bowl. Grant Scott and Bill Long with you along with Matt Shirell down in the sidelines. Thanks, boys. Uh, the commissioner of the BC League, Paul Short. Paul, the, uh, your, your BC champs are up by eight points. Oh, this is great. This is great. That one point on the missed field goal could turn out to be the huge point in this game. It's, it's not over, but we got a lot of work to do yet. We need another couple of touchdowns. Yeah, this uh, Hilltops team, very powerful. I don't think they've trailed this late in the game all season long. I don't know. The look on their faces is like we've been scored on, and it's, maybe it's different for them, but we've got some confidence we can win this thing. Thanks, Paul Short. Back up to you guys. Adam Eckert putting the ball into play with a kickoff, and it'll be uh, taken there on the run by Weiss, who's got it at about the 30-yard line behind the wedge. And he breaks a few tackles. Looked like the Sun would have him pinned a little deeper, but after about five more yards, they shut him down, and the Hilltops will scrimmage from their 37. Well, once again, I say the Saskatoon return men are standing back on the 10-yard line, and uh, Adam Eckert hasn't kicked it inside the 20 yet, and it's forcing Saskatoon players to run up full speed and catch the ball, and they can't see. They can't see uh, for their block, so it's working out to the Sun's advantage that the return men refuse to work to 
play to the strength of Adam Eckert's leg. It is 29-21, the Okanagan Sun leading here late in the fourth quarter, about 10-20 to go. Scrimmaging from their own 37-yard line. Hilltops first down and 10, and what is a key series, obviously, for the Hilltops who want to score here to get back into this contest. And it's Beeland pitching it out to Weiss. He's looking for room on the right side. He's found it, bowling his way forward, breaking a number of tackles. It'll bring up second and short. Well, on that play, Saskatoon wasn't fooling anybody. They lined up with two players in a slot position to the short side of the field, and you knew that it was coming up as a toss. I could see it up here. The Sun is now starting to read that as a toss. They shut it down for gain of only six or seven, which isn't great yards to give up on first down, but it's better than they have been doing against that play. Well, the last time the Sun went in for a touchdown, the Hilltops answered in smart fashion by driving the length of the field and scoring, something they'd like to do here, obviously. Second down and three as Beelands underneath the center. There is some early movement there. No flags come out, though. That's Grenier with the ball. He's got some room running for a first down. He'll uh, give two more fresh downs or three more fresh downs to the Hilltops. Same play, same formation. That one uh, with, with Grenier had the potential to bust for a big one. I noticed the difference in the running backs and that Weiss is more straight ahead and, and he's quick and fast, but Grenier is really their breakaway threat. He can spin off a tackle and go a long way. I think the Sun are going to have to be very leery when he gets the ball. He could be a big play pl player for Saskatoon. It is now first down and 10. The Hilltops will scrimmage just shy of their own 50-yard line. Clock now showing 9.37 and counting. Once again, Steve Beeland calling out the signals. One man in the backfield. That's Weiss, and he'll take the pitch and run up the middle again. Big gain there once again, and still on his feet, plowing forward for another first down for the Hilltops. What a tremendous run by Weiss. He was tackled about three or four yards short, but kept his balance, kept his legs underneath him, kept driving, and took on McDougal and Truscott and dragged them for the first down. The same play, the same toss pattern. Saskatoon is going to what works to get some confidence in their offense. Boy, and so much like Stu Vanderheide has done for the Okanagan Sun, Travis Weiss is just able to carry tacklers with him and add yardage to what should have been a short gain. And uh, we saw it there in uh, spades as he pulls off 10 yards, another first down. The Hilltops now into Okanagan Sun territory, just inside the Sun 50 close to the 49 they're scrimmaging first down and 10 once again it's just Weiss in the backfield three four men on the right side and they pitch that same pass again to Weiss this time the Sun are there to stop him and he shoved backwards Sheeman and McDougal in on that tackle the same play it's uh, we could have actually taken about a three minute break here Grant and just called the one play and played it over again but this time the Sun defense played it much tougher they're not going to allow Saskatoon to run the same play over and over and over again. But you have to be thinking that in that same formation, Saskatoon has a play that complements that. A little bit of a counter or a trap back the other way, and the Sun have to respect that. Yeah, I was just thinking that's got to be something because they lined up in that formation, and it just seems to be nonstop. So it's second down. We'll call it 12. Key play here for the Hilltops and the Sun, of course. Trailing by nine, the Hilltops need a first down to keep this drive alive. And Beeland's going to put it up. He's got a man open, but overthrows him. And that'll bring up third down, and the Sun will get the ball back. That was a big miss for Saskatoon and a lucky break for the Okanagan because Beeland half rolled to his left and then looked back to his right to Gartner, the slot back, who is open, open about 12 or 15 yards down the field in what we call a level two, but he overthrew him. All right, so with 8.26 to go, the Hilltops will have to punt the ball here and get the uh, Okanagan Sun with a chance to get the ball. And now you got to think, uh, you know, as you mentioned, a team like the Sun, they love to score early or quickly, rather. This is a time now for them to maybe try a bit of ball control offense, something they don't specialize in, but it could really play a big part in uh, determining the outcome of this contest. Kerr taking a high snap, but he'll get this punt off just barely. Chris Truscott banged into him, but no flag down on that play. And that's Vanderheide with the ball at his 20. He's got some room on the right side. Oh, a poor a flag comes in there. That's going to be a clip and push the Sun back deep. Uh, they would have scrimmaged from their 30. We'll sort it out. We're going to take a break. The score, Sun 29, Hilltops 21. More from Canada Bowl 2000 after this on CKOB. And welcome back to the Apple Bowl. I'm Grant Scott along with Bill Long and Matt Shirell. It is a 29-21 Okanagan Sun lead. Eight minutes exactly to go in the fourth quarter. The Sun scrimmaging first and ten from their own 20. Zach Silverman underneath the center now as he's got the eye formation. Hands it off to Vanderheide. He's looking for some room. Bowls his way. Stays on his feet. And looking for some open field now. A big first down for the Sun. Well, Vanderheide took on the big all-star Ryan David, middle linebacker, and tossed him away. Just dropped his shoulder, faced him squarely, uh, knocked him aside, and gained another ten yards after that initial hit. The Okanagan Sun are going to win this game. They have to use up some time, and they got to do it on the ground. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the ideal situation is uh, the coaches would draw it up. would be about a seven-minute drive that ends in a touchdown that would uh, pretty much put this game out of reach, but there's tons of football to go. First and 10, the Sun on the 33-yard line now. Bit of room to breathe now as they're out of the shadows of their goalpost. Again, Vanderhyde the ball carry. This time, he'll go nowhere. 
Well, on that play, Clark, the defensive end, slid off his block, came in and made a tackle, uh, managed to get a hold of Van de Hyde behind the line of scrimmage as Van de Hyde was just taking a, a simple power play, lead play off to the left. And it, that's the kind of play that Saskatoon needs from their big players. They've got to get the ball back because their offense can't score in a hurry. They take a long time to score. All right, so that brings up second down. We'll call it eight and a half to go for the Okanagan Sun. They're still in their own territory. <laughs> Scrimmaging from about their 34-yard line. Silverman now in the shotgun again. Six receivers to throw to as they look to uh, pass. But no, Silverman keeps it, runs up the middle, but he'll be stopped short of a first down. I think that was a play by design, but uh, Saskatoon quickly recovered to stop that. Yeah, that was a design quarterback draw. Uh, a pretty safe play in, in that situation. But, uh, you know, you're hoping that somebody's going to have to miss a tackle and, that, and they didn't. And so uh, the Sun are going to have to punt it back now. And say Saskatoon needs a long time to score. It's going to be interesting to see what they can do offensively and how patient they are. Well, they will uh, get a chance to do just that as the Okanagan Sun will have to uh, kick the ball back. Once again, the Hilltops with uh, 10 men on the line and uh, their two wide receivers have been their deep man and kick return men all day long, Andrew Ford, Andrew Ginther. And the two of them are back uh, once again. Actually, I may correct myself. Looks like uh, Justin Paulowski is back there indeed. Number five, Paulowski is back there along with 73, Ginther. As Eckert gets set to take this punt, or this snap, it's a low one. It bounces, but he catches it on the hop, feels it cleanly. Boy, oh, and he's going to run with the ball. Eckert's got some room. He is very close to the first down, has broken it, has a first down. Still on his feet to midfield. Finally, he's still rolling into Hilltop territory. I don't know if that was a design play or a bad snap, but what a gutsy run, and Andrew Adam Eckert has done it again for the Sun. Well, being a former punter, I know exactly what's going through his mind. That ball hits the dirt, and you think, oh, no, I might, I'm going to have some pressure. So he looks up, and there was no pressure. There was nobody in his face, and the, the entire Saskatoon Hilltop team had just caught their blocks, turned around, run back down the field. Uh, well, let's head down to Matt Terrell. He's on the sideline, Matt. Yeah, guys, Dan, you and I know we've seen that play probably about six times this year. He had lots of time to get rid of it. It was a bad snap, but there was not a great rush. He could have easily punted it, but he looked up. He said, I got one man to beat, and I'm going to go for it. And what a gutsy call. And once again, Adam Eckert saves the day. First down, 10. The Sun in Hilltop territory at the 52-yard line. Two men in the backfield. Silverman hands it off to uh, Vander Hyde, who's got a big first down and lots of yardage now. Breaks it to the left side. He's got some room. He'll go a long way to the 10, the 5. Touchdown! What a run by Stu Vander Hyde! What a great play. They ran the option, but they gave it to the dive man on the option, and he went right up the middle. Nobody touched him. He busted it outside, picked up some blocks downfield. And there's an example of receivers on your team turning a first down into a touchdown by making some great blocks. Well, I'll tell you what. We talked about how key it was for the stars of this team to uh, come up big for the Sun. And we saw that in spades. Adam Eckert on the uh, fake kick. And now this huge run by Stu Vanderhyde, who just showed incredible grit and determination, would not be stopped. The Sun with a 14-point lead and five minutes to go. Daryl Ashton set for this point after as well. And it's down, and the kick is up through, and good. 36-21, the Sun lead. We'll take a break and be back with more in a moment on CKOB. And welcome back to the Apple Bowl. I'm Grant Scott, along with Bill Long and Matt Shirell. The Okanagan Sun have taken a 36-21 lead, 5-10 on the clock on a 52-yard run by Stu Vanderheide, which has certainly changed this game as well. And uh, way up, Matt Shirell down on the sidelines once again, Matt. It's unbelievable. Stu Vanderheide is sitting on the bench all by himself. Uh, and every guy in the team has come over him and shook his hand as he's finally getting up. He looked like he was absolutely exhausted there. He, didn't, he doesn't even have a smile on his face. He's so serious right now. All right, and uh, so Adam Eckerd will put this punt in the air, or this kickoff into the air, and back there to take it is Travis Weiss. He fields it at about the 15-yard line. He's got a big wedge to run behind, looking for some room, and he's got it. Still running and still on his feet. Look out. What a what turnaround this could be. Still on his feet. There's the clip that came in as uh, number 30 of the Okanagan Sun. Had a, Tom Malinga had a play at him, but clearly was clipped there, and now uh, that's going to at least cost the Hilltops some yardage on that play. That's unfortunate for the Hilltops because they are having a great return, and they've been very close to busting it loose. Adam Eckert finally pounded one deep, and it allowed Saskatoon to form up their return and bring it back to the right. And they did a great job of not making bad blocks the whole way down the field, except at the very end to some guy who was nowhere near the play ends up shoving Malinga in the back, and down he goes. And now they're going to be 15 yards back. Oh, what a turnaround. Uh, boy, on a couple of key plays there, a penalty by the Hilltops, and now they have to scrimmage from around their own 40. 
And uh, on top of that, of course, the uh, broken play, which led to the first down on the bad snap, and uh, then a touchdown one play later, the quick strike offense of the Sun, and a 15-point lead right now. We'll see what the Hilltops can do. As you mentioned, they're a ball control offense, but they are running out of time now. 4.50 to go and counting. First down, 10. Out of the shotgun, Steve Beeland calling the signals. He drops back to pass, looking to his left side. Puts it up. That pass uh, caught on the hop. It will be incomplete. Second down, Hilltops. Yeah, he ran uh, three receivers to the left-hand side, and he threw to the short man who curled it underneath. But Beeland just let... Uh, Tactically speaking, he had a little bit of a late release point when he threw that ball and put it in the dirt. All right, back down to Matt Shirell. Jay Christensen, when did you turn into a cheerleader? <laughs> well, you know, I got to do anything you can, and if this crowd's going to be the 13th man and they want to make noise, now's the time to do it. Well, you guys got a nice lead right now. You're going to hang on. We're going to give it our best shot. Right on, Jay Christensen, back up to you guys. Second down, Dan. Belan again out of the shotgun. Their passing game has not been their strong point today, but they've got to go to it now. Down by 15. He's got an open man there. That executed perfectly as Ginther will have a first down for the Hilltops. Ginther runs a 15-yard out pattern. Belan threw it to the spot on the sidelines where nobody can get it but, any, but a player from Saskatoon. There's a nice pitch and catch. They have to maintain their composure in order to come down. They have... Four minutes to go, which is a lot of time in Canadian football, but they are really going to have to score, I think, in the next minute and a half to have yeah. a chance. All right, first down 10 from their own 52. The Hilltops, a big second down conversion there by Steve Beeland, the quarterback, as he's got three men to the left side. Very slow in coming up to the line. Finally sends men in motion. Weiss is the old lone back, but he's going to put it up in the air once again. Met there and hit hard. That was number 63 for the Sun coming in. Kyler Jukes hammered Beeland, and it's an incomplete pass. Three receivers to the left for Saskatoon, and they all ran hook patterns 10 or 11 yards down the field and stopped. With each one of them had an Okanagan Sun player right on his butt. Beeline looked at him and said, I don't have anybody to throw to. Tried to throw it at the end and then got hit just as he released it. And that will bring up second down and 10. And uh, you got to start to think the Hilltops really getting into three down territory here at this stage of the game with uh, the clock under four minutes to go. So the Sun defense, a lot of work left to do here. Also in the shotgun, Beeland dropping back to pass. He floods the field with receivers. And again, Ginther is wide open on that sideline. And I'll tell you what, if nothing else, uh, Dax Olison may have to tighten up that coverage because they'll do that all day and gain 15 yards of play. Well, they can do that all day, but the day is getting really short right now. I think the Okanagan Sun uh, and Darren Prouse and his defensive backs are more than content with giving them the short stuff, making them work their way down the field and use up the clock. And the clock is the enemy of Saskatoon right now. All right, 340 and counting. First down and 10. The Hilltops trailing by 15, but scrimmaging from the Sun 44-yard line. This time, Beeland's under the center. He is again back to pass, putting it up again. Wide open is uh, Ford this time. And he's still moving another first down about the 22-yard line. Uh, those two wide receivers, though, are definitely wide open on this drive. Yeah, the Sun's giving him lots of room and maybe a little bit too much room, as you mentioned in the previous play. They ran the curl pattern in from the left over top of the linebackers, and there was lots of space in there. And we just heard the announced crowd for this game at 6,200. Super crowd here at the Apple Bowl. First down 10 from the 22. Beeland dropping back to pass again. He's got a number of men to pick and throw to, but this time it'll be caught incomplete. My, uh, my mistake there, a little anxious. Eric Gartner had a, plenty of time to pull that in, but I think he looked to run instead of catch the ball. Classic example of turning your head at the last minute. I was looking down the field, and I could see the slot back from the left-hand side of Saskatoon running straight down the middle of the field. And he, he was open, but Beeland just didn't see him. Beeland was too busy looking over to his right and was focused on the three receivers over there. So it's second down and 10, but as mentioned earlier, this is three down territory now for the Okanagan Sun, or for the Saskatoon Hilltops, pardon me. 3.08 to go. Second down 10 from the Sun. 23, we'll call it. Out of the shotgun, Steve Beeland calling signals. He's got time to pass as he puts it up and this time again it's Ginther wide open and uncovered but he'll be very close indeed has another first down and the Hilltops are inside the 10 yard line well, the Sun coverage is very soft they're refusing to allow themselves to get into a man-to-man -man coverage situation that's going to potentially allow a big play but they're making Saskatoon work the ball down the field well this drive's taking just a little over a minute right now and uh, you said they need to score in about 90 seconds and they're very close to doing just that one thing about a prevent defense is it seems to be uh, something that uh, they are allowing the hilltops too much time to get open and uh, especially ford and ginther have been wide open on this drive and uh, there's been no doubt that these passes are going to be completed the only blip was one drop pass so a chance to score and the hilltops can pull back to within eight maybe seven if they go for the two-point convert not likely at this time of the game they'll likely take the single if they do get six out of the shotgun, Steve Beeland calling signals. He hands it off to Weiss this time, and he's got some room. Weiss is running, and he will score. Touchdown, Hilltops. 
Very well executed play. Just an inside handoff to White. Off to his left. Heading up straight underneath the goal post. The Sun were really looking for a pass play on that because that's what Saskatoon had done all the way down the field. But uh, Saskatoon has scored now, and that's a big, big play. Yeah, the Hilltops came out and did exactly what they had to do. Just drove smartly down the field. But I'll tell you what, playing that soft defense, I, I don't know that it was the wisest decision. Obviously, you don't want to get burnt deep. But when you just allow them to take 10 yards at a time, uh, it was obviously easy for the Hilltops to gain the momentum and keep this drive going. Yeah, you have to get some pressure on the quarterback. If you're going to lay off, you've got to be bringing some heat, bringing some blitzes, and Beeland has far too much time. All right, the Kurt. Series. Kurt puts that point up. It is good, and we'll take one more break. With 2.38 to go, the Sun lead 36-28. This is Canada Bowl 2000 on CKOB. And we are back at the Apple Bowl. Good afternoon. I'm Grant Scott, along with Bill Long and Matt Sherrell. And what is coming right down to the wire? What a surprise with the Okanagan Sun, who've played some dandies in this game, very much like their provincial championship, which saw them finally prevail in overtime. Now the Sun trying to hang on to an eight-point lead. The Saskatoon Hilltops very likely to try an onside kick here, but we'll see. Maybe they're going to put it on the hands of their defense, pin them deep, and hope the uh, defense can get them to and out. Of course, at this time of the game, with 2.38 on the clock, it's uh, wide open as to what they'll do. Kerr puts it up, and indeed, they do opt to kick it deep. Aaron David will take it at about his 10-yard line, but can they, can they get the wedge for him? And some running room. David gets outside. He's got one man to beat, and he'll have some room. Still on his feet, finally, at about the 35-yard line. Good field position for the Okanagan Sun to start this drive. Excellent return. Excellent return. As the Ryan David, or, or, sorry, Aaron David, get those two confused, even though they're light years apart in size. Aaron David head up the field, and the Sun likes to start the return in the middle and then bust it out late, and that's what they did. They beat the contain out to the left and turned, uh, turned a good kick into a good return well it comes down to the shoulders of the okanagan sun offense to keep this ball out of the hands of a very potent steve beeland and a saskatoon hilltop offense which has shown an ability to score in this contest as well so here we go first down 10 the sun on their own 36 i formation Karagata and vanderheide in the backfield silverman calling signals he'll give it to vanderheide he's looking for some room to run keeps on his feet and he'll plow forward maybe picking up close to five yards good solid yardage on that first down play very simple football play just straight ahead run and use up the clock make saskatoon make the tackles van de Heide's having a great second half and saskatoon on that play was right up to the challenge and uh, didn't let him get a first down as ryan david came in stuffed it up and then uh, kerr all right well the hilltops have called the timeout so we'll do the same it's 38 26 the sun lead we'll be back with more in a moment on seek and welcome back to the apple bowl live coverage of canadian bowl 2000 the okanagan sun 36 the saskatoon hilltops 28 the clock showing 2.23 to go, and after a five-yard first down gain, the Hilltops took a timeout, and that at least stops the clock for the time being. And now a big second down play here for the Okanagan Sun. They certainly need a few more first downs to uh, put this game out of reach for the Hilltops, who's shown they can score in a hurry if they have to. Silverman is going to pass. He puts it up. No chance on that play, but there's interference indeed. Karagata was hit by two players, and the Sun will convert. Well, that was a, an unfortunate play for Saskatoon. And that they, you know, they're getting a pass interference, which is going to give the Sun a first down. But uh, number 44, Ron Zur, was all over Karagata. Just tackled him, brought him to the ground. It was really unnecessary because I don't think uh, Karagata was going to be able to catch the ball in the first place. No, it certainly didn't look like Karagata had much chance to catch that, uh, that pass. It was not that well thrown. But I'll tell you what, key plays often come on uh, sloppy plays by the defense. And that was a big one there that has hurt the Hilltops as the Sun now moved close to Hilltop territory. Scrimmaging from their own 54, 2, 20 to go. It's first down 10. Sun very likely to stay on the ground here as well with Karagata and Vanderheide in the backfield. And he will hand it off to Vanderheide. Plows forward and again, solid first down yardage as he'll get close to the Hilltops 50 and bring up second down at about four. Well, the very young offensive line of the Okanagan Sun has really come into their own in the second half of this game. They are starting to move some people around up front and Vanderheide's two or three yards over the line of scrimmage before anybody from Saskatoon's really laying a hand on him. All right, well, they uh, marked him well back. Second down and six is what it's going to be. I thought he'd made it very close to the 50-yard line. And I'm not sure what has happened here in terms of the timeout. Uh, oh, I didn't see equipment a, problem is Yeah, I, I didn't see an indication from the referee one way or the other. I just, uh, indeed, no timeout was called. They just allowed Vanderhyde some time to uh, get his shoe tied up again. And that's second down and six yards to go. The Sun in Hilltop territory. Two, oh, four, and counting to go in the fourth quarter in a thrilling Canadian Bowl National Junior Football Championship. Silverman, again, emptying the backfield. No doubt they're going to the air on this play. 
Silverman with some time. He'll put it up, and he's going to... Oh, again, all over him, and no doubt about that. A terrible play by Tyler Pokeyaway, who clearly grabbed Adam Eckert, or was that... Uh, that might have been Sheeman over there, uh, who's going after that pass. Check that. It was Farnsworth. Either way, clearly interference on that play. Well, that's a play where he had one receiver on the right-hand side and three to the left, and it's a design play that the Sun were working on this week. I was watching it in practice where the, he had tight coverage, and the quarterback actually throws the ball short on purpose because the receiver has a better chance of coming back for it than the defender. In this case, the ball was a little too short, but the Saskatoon defender pushed off on, uh, on Adam Eckert in order to try and get the ball. All right, as uh, they come up to the line of scrimmage now, it's second or first down and 10 from the Hilltops. 36-yard line. Zach Silverman up to the line of scrimmage. Again, Karagata, Vanderheide in the backfield. Everybody up for the Hilltops. They give it to Karagata, the up back, and he'll go nowhere, maybe gaining a yard. But again, precious time chewing off. Let's go down to the sidelines. Matt Sherrell. Thanks, Grant. 6,200 fans in attendance of this Canadian Bowl 2000. I tell you, they've gotten their a great treat today. A fabulous football game. And I tell you, we've heard a loud crowd in here uh, two weeks ago when the Victoria uh, Sun game went into overtime. But these, these these fans here today, there's probably about uh, 3,500 3, more than, than was here against Victoria, and they're twice as loud. I can hardly hear myself think out here. All right, well, we have a timeout on the field, so we'll take one more break. You're listening to the uh, Can Canadian Bowl 2000. We're live on CKLV, back with the finale in a moment. 44 to go, the Okanagan Sun, an eight-point lead, and the ball, second down, we'll call it nine, scrimmaging from the Hilltop's 35-yard line, perhaps a little too far out of the range of Adam Eckert, their field goal kicker, so they'd like to move it a few more yards. Silverman rolling out to his left side, bit of a surprise, he's going to put it up and throws into heavy coverage, no chance there, as Adam Eckert was unable to bring that one down, and uh, not a surprise to see Jay Christensen put that ball up, but that certainly gives uh, the Saskatoon Hilltops a few more precious seconds. Well, the Sun had to try and get a first down. They needed seven or eight yards, and they're more comfortable getting first downs going through the air. They weren't content to just uh, run the ball up they got and settle for a field goal attempt. Uh, Adam Eckert was open on the on the left-hand side for a bit, but he did end up with three Saskatoon players all around him at the end. Okay, so that brings up third down from the 35-yard line. They'll uh, attempt a 42-yard field goal here as Adam Eckert gets set to pin it. And uh, I'll tell you what, this is a big, big play. If they make it, of course, it gives them a 39-28 lead, 11 points, and the Hilltops would have to score twice. Even a single would mean the Hilltops would have to score twice to win this contest. But a key play here, it's down. Eckert gets it up. That's going to be well short. No chance there. It falls down about the five-yard line and fielded there by number 73. That's Andrew Ginther, who's met immediately. But that play, in spite of that, will still come out to the 20. Penalty against them. And there's a flag on the play, too. As, uh, well, I don't know what happened there, but there's a flag down that happened on that kick, so we'll see what happens on this play as the referees try to sort it out. Zach Silverman is signaling that it's a penalty against the Hilltop, so we'll wait and see what uh, is going on there. And I don't know, Matt Sherrell, I don't know if you've got a better vantage point from uh, where you're standing. I didn't see what happened, but I saw the ref uh, indicate a hold against uh, the Hilltops, so definitely is against the Hilltops, and that's a crucial, crucial penalty. Boy, the penalties have just been killing the Hilltops on this uh, drive as uh, they've had a couple of chances to get the ball back, but penalties have uh, caused them problems. And now it looks like Ginther down on the field as well. He got hit pretty hard trying to run that kickback, uh, Bill, and uh, he's still uh, lying prone on the field. Well, he got hit low. Uh, somebody came in, uh, somebody made the tackle, hit him low. He's probably hurt his knee or his ankle. You, I don't really want to look at the replay on TV because I've done this myself. I'm not really interested in seeing somebody hurt their knee. But uh, that's going to be a big loss. That's going to be a big loss to their, uh, their offense if Ginther can't play because he's one of the, their key receivers today. All right, well, we know the penalty went against the Saskatoon Hilltops, but there was not enough to give the Sun a first down, or I'm assuming the hold actually happened on the return because uh, they've just set the ball down at the, uh, looks like about the one and a half yard line of the Saskatoon Hilltops, but here's where we sit. There's a minute 28 on the clock. The Sun lead by eight, 36 to 28. The Saskatoon Hilltops with 108 yards of field standing between them and a tie game. Obviously, the uh, Sun go into a bit of a prevent, but I'll tell you what, Bill, I've, I've never been a big fan of prevent defenses, but I hope they don't play them too soft. They obviously don't want to get burnt deep, but considering b has not really shown a strong passing game today, you've got to wonder if uh, Coach Lawrence Nagy is going to keep him in that prevent defense for too long. Well, they can lay off on their coverages, but they're going to have to blitz once or twice to make him hurry his throws. 
Well, can you take advantage of a blitzing situation here with the Sun love to get Beeland in the end zone here and take two points on a safety in the ball back? They don't come too fast, but there's a pass that's well overthrown. Oh, a great effort there as uh, number 78, Andrew Ford, went up for it. I thought that pass was well overthrown, and Doug Hartle was going to catch it. Well, Ford went up for it on a post pattern from the right-hand side. He, he should have made the catch, but I think he was looking at Hartle coming across from the safety position a little too much, and he took his eyes off of it. But you know, at this point in the game, your player's got to make these plays, and he has to make that catch. Yeah, it's called giving up the body, and he looked almost like he was, as you mentioned, ready for the hit that uh, really didn't come, and we saw that there on the replay. Second down and 10 from deep inside their own territory, about the one and a half. Again, there's a three down territory for the Hilltops uh, with just about a minute to go. Beeland has got some time. He'll put it up, and Corey Weiss could not stop Andrew Ford there. Uh, looked like Weiss might have had a play on it, but Ford makes the catch and a first down for the Hilltops. Very well thrown ball by Beeland on an out to uh, Ford on the left-hand side. Just over top of Weiss, who couldn't quite get up to it, but that's a very difficult pass to defend. All right, so first down, the Hilltops get out from the shadows of their goal post. Scrimmaging from their own 17-yard line. Now with a bit of breathing space. Beeland again, back to pass. He's got a man wide open there. And that is caught by number 11. That is Justin Kelly for another first down of the Hilltops. And again, the sun falling into this soft, soft defense. And uh, the Hilltops are able to exploit it. Yeah, they're going into the hurry-up offense now. The times, are, times are enemy. they got to move it. Minute six to go in the game. First down and ten. They just whistle it in now. The clock starts moving as Beeland drops back to pass. He puts it up and again has Ford and a first down and more. Ford's into open field. Look out as he gets into Sun territory. Dragged down about the 35-yard line. And the Hilltops are by no means dead. Well, that's an example of what we talked about earlier. Quick receivers who can turn a short pass into a big play. Just a quick slant by, by, by Ford from the left. Turns it into a huge game. And what a turnaround, 53 seconds to go. The Hilltops very much alive and moving the ball. We talked about their ball control, but they have a lightning quick ability to score too. Beeland back to pass. Again, he's got man wide open, nobody covering Ford. And I don't understand why they're laying back so deep at this stage of the game. They're now inside the 20 yard line and the Sun defense is playing very soft. They're playing very, very soft and they're forcing Saskatoon to make the plays and Saskatoon is making the plays. They're just going to run hook and curls all the way to the end zone if they don't watch it. At some point they're going to have to step up and stay tight on these men or this, uh, this game could very well be tied. 44 seconds to go. Beeline back to pass and again nobody there. A great play! Oh! Unbelievable how they blew him down. I don't know. Down down on contact I guess but that was number 26 stepping in for the Okanagan Sun what closure by Dax Olofsson there was two receivers with not a man five yards around him that was a well-thrown pass by Beelan but Olofsson came out of nowhere and made a superb pick and I'm glad I was wrong on that call that was a tremendous interception just when it looked like Saskatoon had everything going their way moving the ball down the field pass 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 Beeland hung one out there that was a little low. I didn't think anybody was going to get to that. And Dax Olsen, who hasn't played in about three or four weeks, just made probably the biggest play of his life. Well, I must admit, again, I'm a little surprised on the call in the sense that if you watch it here, and we can see it on the Shaw Cable replay, I don't think anybody touched Olsen when he caught this pass. And uh, obviously they just ruled him down on the ground, but I mean, nobody, nobody had really made contact with him, but they clearly knew the play was dead. Here we go, the Sun with a chance to sit on this lead. 36 seconds to go. Zach Silverman is under center, and he'll just take a knee, and indeed he'll go down, and now the clock can run as the Hilltops, I believe, if they have a timeout, it would just be one left, and I'm waiting to see a signal from our officials. I'm not sure, because I know they called one for sure. No, there is no timeouts left for the Hilltops, and it's starting to look like the Okanagan Sun can run this clock out now as uh, Silverman will want to let the game clock get down as low as he can and you can see all the people in the backfield there and David and Adam Eckert are standing at the five yard line the Sun are on the verge of their second national championship 15 seconds to go and again Zach Silverman takes a knee and now the Hilltops are coming in and uh, we're seeing a bit of extracurricular activity this is a type of play where the uh, Sun obviously will just want to walk away from this and allow the clock to run out as uh, it's now reading 11 seconds to go and once the referee whistles it in it will be over and they'll be able to allow the clock to run and you'll hear it the okanagan sun will be national champions in the year 2000 the crowd screaming and this game is almost over as they uh, he'll tell the sun are celebrating a little early here and there it is we're done what a year. The Okanagan Sun, the year 2000 Canadian Bowl Championships. They upset the Saskatoon Hilltops. And Bill Long, what a fabulous football game we saw today. Well, I got a lot of guys that I coached with. And I'm so happy for them. I can't believe it.
Yes, it's a superb finish, and uh, give Dax Olufsen credit there. His turnover in the final minute deep in their own zone is the key, and you see the Okanagan Sun are celebrating the Saskatoon Hilltops, I think, are in shock. What can you say about a team that gave up one point in the playoffs, came in favored here as well, but the... Uh, for, as far as they're concerned, I think the curse of the Apple Bowl must continue because the Hilltops have never won in Okanagan turf, and it stays that way. Well, this has been a tremendous football game, and, and as I say, I've got a lot of guys that I coached with. Here. All right, I think we got uh, Matt Sherrell down there, too, indeed, with Jay Christensen. Let's go down to Matt. Thanks, guys. Jay Christensen, your second national championship. How does it feel, buddy? Well, it feels great. I mean, that's the goal going into training camp is to be at this spot at this time, and the guys... The guys were phenomenal. They played so hard. Our big play guys made big plays. It's just awesome. You guys never make it easy on, on yourselves, the coaching staff, or the fans. I mean, that prevent defense looked like it was going to cost you there for a second. Well, you know, I, I've never been a big fan of prevent defenses. I love playing against them. I mean, we've made a habit out of that this year coming. Yeah, it looks like we've lost Matt down there uh, on the sideline. That would be too bad if we lose uh, our uh, field mic there. Uh, but Matt uh, has stopped. So, tell you what, we're going to take a break, try and get this sorted out. Uh, the Okanagan Sun have won the 2000 Canadian Bowl. They're national champs. The final score, Okanagan 36, the Saskatoon Hilltops 28. We're back with more in the post game in just a moment. Championship with a 36-28 victory. Matt Charell, we're hearing you down there now. I think you've managed to get that mic working, okay, and uh, we'll be checking in with you in just a bit as uh, he will uh, undoubtedly get some great post-game coverage for you. Well, Bill Long, what a what a super game this was, and I know you as an ex-player uh, really feeling something a little extra special here as well. Oh, I certainly do. I have a, you know, a real emotional connection to this team and a lot of the coaches like Ray Wheatley and Pat Kantner, Barry Stang, guys who've been there for seven, eight, nine years, been through all the disappointments, but they played a great, great game they took advantage of their opportunities they took advantage of when saskatoon gave them penalties or turnovers and they made them and they scored points when they had to yeah saskatoon ran the ball on them yeah saskatoon probably had a bit of an advantage on the offensive line throughout the game but not nearly what they thought they were going to be and the sun really did play a solid football game all right now we know matt's got that mic working again he's down there with uh, special teams coach pat kantner matt what a time for batteries to die we got it we got him going now pat kantner congratulations man thank you thank you very much uh, you guys made it hard on the fans, didn't you? Well, you know, uh, Saskatoon is an unbelievable football team. I mean, they're so well coached. They're filled with tremendous athletes. And, uh, you know, our guys are young, but, boy, we had a lot of heart and desire today. And it finally, finally won one. You betcha. You, you're in charge of the special teams, and uh, they, they had a special game today. They played with their hearts, and uh, we knew that was going to come down to the difference in the game. When Whenever you play a team from Saskatchewan, uh, they're so fundamentally sound that, Special teams often make the difference, and today, like two weeks ago, uh, we, we came out and played well. I'll go celebrate, Pat. Thank you very much. Pat Kander, the special teams coach. I'll send it back up to you guys, and then we'll uh, try to grab a few players. All right. Well, we know there's a big crowd milling around uh, down on the field there as the Okanagan Sun get set to uh, uh, grab the uh, champion's trophy. And uh, it's funny, before the start of the game, Bill, we were trying to uh, find out the name of the trophy. And since they retired the Armadale Cup, it doesn't have a name. It's just the Canadian Bowl trophy. But it belongs to the Okanagan Sun. Ironically, they were the last winner of the Armadale Cup back in 88 with that 50 nothing victory over Burlington. Needless to say, today's contest was just a little bit harder uh, today's contest was a battle uh, you know it, with it being 14 14 at the half which is exactly where the sun wanted to be they didn't want to be down they didn't want to have to come from behind they wanted to get out there and make saskatoon come from behind and that's what they did all right now matt sorrell's been moving around i think we got him back down there again you're lost in the crowd there matt what do you got uh, yeah i'm lost in the crowd but i do have uh, zach silverman and a number of players zach congratulations buddy thank you it's indescribable <laughs> So how does it feel besides indescribable? <laughs> besides indescribable, it's like actually I think a big weight lifted off all of our shoulders and, and ten times better than you would have thought. Uh, your offense, you, you moved the ball great all game. Well, we had no doubt our offense was going to be able to move the ball. We think we have the best offense in the league. And we said they may have three all-Canadian O-line, but we got a pretty good O-line too, and they played a hell of a game. Good, two, uh, two good football teams went at it in a great national championship. Yeah, this is, I mean, I like it better than last year. Last year's might have been a better game, but we won, so I'll take it. Uh, what, what a couple of days for you. Last night at the banquet, you were named the most valuable offensive player in the country. Now you win the national championship. What are you going to do tonight? 
Uh, sleep, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna probably go out and have a pretty good time. This is, uh, I mean, this is this was what mattered. Last night was a capper, but this is the real thing. If I could, I'd just like to say hi to my grandma, who I hope is listening on the internet in Winnipeg. We're sorry you couldn't be here, grandma. We miss you. Right on, Zach Silverman. Great game. Thanks. Okay, guys, we'll send it back up to you. All right. Well, thanks for that, Matt. As uh, we continue here post game, celebrating an Okanagan Sun victory, 36-28, the final score. And I'll tell you what, when it comes to exciting football, uh, you know, it's funny. I mean, I don't know how you couldn't be a football fan after seeing the last two games that the Sun have just played here uh, for us in front of uh, this hometown crowd. It's been just a tremendous football, exciting, uh, well played. I think the difference between this game and the one two weeks ago was that that was a high scoring game, but it was a sloppy game. A lot of people were wondering as to whether or not the Okanagan Sun were, would be able to stop this juggernaut from the prairies that had done so well. But I think we got the answer here today in spades. Matt Terrell joining us once again, Matt. Yeah, I'm with big number 40, Ryan Sheeman. Ryan, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can't uh, I don't even know where I am right now. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Hey, uh, w what a football game, eh? What do, you, what do you have to say about your opponent in the Hilltops? Hey, they played a classy game today, and it was a battle. It was a real battle out there today, and... Well, we came out victorious, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I guess I guess there's a new number one ranked team in the country. That's right. There should be two. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I got nothing to I, <laughs> I got nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations, Ryan Sheeman. Obviously, uh, at a loss for words as the Okanagan Sun players celebrate their second national championship and the first since 1988. I'll send it back up to you guys. All right, thanks a lot for that, Matt. And uh, with any luck, we'll be able to get uh, head coach Lawrence Nagy on as well. And I know he's tied up now in celebrations, of course. So we see the players all milling around the trophy now, something they've worked long and hard for. A lot of questions, uh, you know, surrounding the team as to whether or not they were going to be able to carry it through. Uh, an offense that really didn't score well in the first half uh, had many people concerned that the Hilltops would be able to run away and hide. But the defense came out and played solid. The offense came out and played their best playoff game in the first half, I thought. And uh, in the second half, guys like Stu Vanderheide and, of course, Adam Eckert really took over. They, they, they really did. They really did. All right, I think we got Matt. I think we got Matt Sorrell back down there once again. Uh, Matt with the uh, Sun President Bob Lindsay. Yeah, I'm with the big guy. Not not a hard guy to find, or not an easy guy to lose in a crowd like this. Uh, congratulations, Bob. Matt, thank you very much. I mean, you you've been here for a couple of years. You watched this team never give up, never quit. They've got talent. They've got guts, and best of all, they got pride and passion for this game. And uh, I don't know. It is remarkable, my friend. Just remarkable. It's been a long time since national championships. The first one was 1988, uh, 2000. Well, you know, let, let's count the last four years how close we've come. And coming this year, of course, we won it. But the last three years, we came so close. We've always had a good football team. The breaks just haven't quite gone our way sometimes. But this game today is for all of those teams and all of those guys who played. Every one of them deserves this win, and we'll be celebrating with the veterans, we'll be celebrating with the rookies, we'll be celebrating with the graduates, the people who graduated from this program in the last three years. They'll all be here today, and uh, I'm so happy for them. I, I, just, I, I just can't describe how happy I am for those guys. Don't forget the fans, 6,200 of them filled the Alpha Bowl. Well, we had 5,000 seats in here. It was standing room only. There were two or three deep along the sideline. And we owe them this one to our fans. I tell you, we owe them this, and uh, I hope they appreciate it. I know they do. Uh, we're going to come back next year. We're going to win the seventh straight BCFC title. Then we're going to do this again. We're going to have a lot of fun. Bob Lindsay, thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you very much, Matt. Bob Lindsay, the president of the Okanagan Sun. Uh, back up to you, Grant. All right, thanks a lot, Matt. Isn't that kind of a funny thing about sports, though, you know? The Okanagan Sun reached the pinnacle of the season with this uh, national title, and there's Bob Lindsay already thinking about 2001, Bill on. Well, that's why teams have success year after year. Uh, they don't dwell on their successes or their failures. They plan ahead and they think ahead, and that's what this team has always done. Well, it's been a superb performance so far. Uh, what, a, what a way to cap a season as we saw a game that uh, really did, I think, leave everybody on the edge of their seats throughout. The sun fell down a little bit early, but only by seven points. They, really, the key, I think, in this game, we talked about it, Bill, was they never let Saskatoon get away from them. Yeah, exactly. They kept the game close. It was always a you know, one-touchdown uh, difference either way. But, you know, Saskatoon wanted to have five pl big plays as, their, as their, their key when they started the game. They didn't really get any. The Sun got big plays. They got a 60-yard touchdown pass. They got a big play on a third down on punt. They had Van de Heide on another 43. So the big offensive plays and special team plays were put by the Sun, and that's what carried the difference. To me, the, the, the surprising thing is, is not the fact that 
that the Sun, uh, or, uh, that Saskatoon scored 28 points. It's the fact that the Sun, the Sun scored 36, and they did that on big plays and opportune times. Yeah, they really did, and uh, you know, as we've said a few times already today, it was their superstars that were all the difference in the game. The Stu Vanderheide, Zach Silverman had a solid game at quarterback, and of course Adam Eckert as well. And what can you say about Adam Eckert, who uh, you know really maybe turned the game around with that third down bad snap? He was punting, and uh, looked like the Hilltops were going to get the ball back, and uh, trailing only by eight points at that time. Well, a bad snap, and Eckert saw there was no rush cover or or a punt cover, if you will, punt rush, and uh, he was able to pick it up and just make the first down. But then. A a penalty or two later and next thing you knew the sun were in the end zone and with that 15 point lead we're able to hang on certainly give the saskatoon hilltops credit who put one heck of a scare into the okanagan sun defense as they uh well first gave up a touchdown they drove down in about 90 seconds so with two and a half minutes to go uh, they were able to get the ball back finally dax olifson with that interception with 40 seconds to go was the difference once again we head back down to matt Shirell. yeah and i'm with jason weber the uh defensive backs coach for the saskatoon hilltops jason a heartbreaking loss yeah, uh, you know, it really was. We were we started on our one-yard line there with about a minute and a half to go, and uh, we had made it about 75 yards down the field, and, and uh, you know, their defensive back made a good play, picked off the ball, and that kind of sealed the victory for them. It was an incredible second half, incredible football game, and, you know, they, they played really well, and, and they won. Yeah, two, two great football teams in this national championship game, and the 6,200 fans here at the Apple Bowl were witness to a, a real thriller. I mean, unfortunately, one team has to lose, and obviously you guys did not expect to lose this game. You came in undefeated and um, all the confidence in the world. For sure, I mean, uh, you always come to a game like this confident, not overconfident, but uh, you, you prepare and you, you, have, you don't ever go in a game thinking you're gonna lose. And uh, I mean, it, you hate to lose this one, but I mean, yeah, someone's gotta lose, like you say. Yeah, obviously you guys plan on being back here next year. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. You know, uh, 2001 season starts tomorrow. Uh, you know, it, you never sleep. The guys will get back at it in January and start lifting the weights and running again. And no doubt about it, we'll have a good, strong team again next year. Well, congratulations on an outstanding season. The Hilltops were just unbelievable. And an outstanding performance in the Canadian Bowl final today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jason uh, Weber, the defensive backs coach for the uh, Saskatoon Hilltops, who unfortunately for the Hilltops came out on the short end of a 36-28 score. A fabulous football game. I'll send it back up to you guys, and I'll look for some more player reaction in a bit. All right. Well, thanks for that, Matt, as uh, we will uh, continue on down on the sidelines with Matt in just a few minutes. But uh, we got finally did get some game stats in, and uh, Bill Long just kind of coordinating them all right now. But, Bill, let's uh, do a bit of a statistical breakdown. Who are the, the big players of the game so far? Or throughout, I guess. <laughs> so far, we're done. So Well, we look from a passing standpoint. Uh, Silverman probably threw his fewest number of passes. He's thrown in quite a few weeks, only 21 attempts. So he was 13 of 21 for 232 yards. Byland was 18 of 28 for 227. So they're very, very even on the, uh, on the passing yardage there. Rushing. Uh, both teams really went to the run today. They really did. With uh, with Vandeheide really having a great game. 15 carries, 142 yards. That's over, that's almost 10 yards a carry. <laughs> That's a wonderful, wonderful game. No All right. He was an offensive star. Let me stop you there, Bill, because uh, Matt is back down on the sideline with uh, one of the big defensive keys to this victory, Ryan Folk. Matt Shirell, go ahead. Yeah, Ryan Folk, uh, last night, a big night for you last night, all Canadian, but this has got to be way more be important for you, eh? <laughs> and that's, that, that, that last night, man, those words don't need nothing. This is what this is what counts right here. This is what counts, number one. I've waited too long for this. Had too many heartbreakers. This is what all this makes up for it. What a, what, a, what a fine performance by two great football clubs. Uh, what do you got to say about the, the, the performance by the Hilltops? Oh, those guys, those, guys, those guys are unreal. Those guys are, those guys are a hell of a ball club. Those guys are tough. I mean, they were by far the toughest, toughest team we played all year. Like, it was, it was unreal. It was unreal. Those guys are really tough. I give those guys all the credit in the world. Very, very clean game, but what a, what a way very to go clean. out, eh? What those, guys, those guys are sportsmen to the greatest, man. Those guys are good sports. I mean, I feel, I feel yeah, somebody's got to lose, you know. I'm, I'm glad it wasn't us, but I kind of feel bad for those guys. They had played a good game, and they're all good guys. Right on. You want to say uh, hello to anyone listening back home or anything? 
Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's just everybody's out here. Right on. <laughs> right on. Congratulations, Ryan. Thanks a lot. Uh, very happy, Ryan Folk. I tell you, we're not getting a lot out of these players because they're uh, they're at a loss for words. I mean, they just want to go celebrate. But I'll uh, send it back up to you, uh, Grant, and we'll try to locate a couple more. All right. Well, thanks a lot for that, Matt. And uh, we should also pass on a big thank you to all the staff from uh, Shaw Cable as well for their great work here today and uh, for working with us as well. So we say thanks to you guys as the Okanagan Sun tap a wonderful year 2000 season with a 36-28 victory.